financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bobs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. The Associated Press reports the chief political foe of Russian President Vladimir Putin was convicted along with his brother on Tuesday in a fraud case widely seen as a vendetta by the Kremlin, triggering one of Russia's boldest anti-government demonstrations in years. Police allowed a few thousand protesters to gather just outside Red Square for about two hours, a show of relative restraint for Russian authorities who have little tolerance for dissent, before moving in to break up the unsanctioned rally by pushing the demonstrators towards some way entrances. The rally came hours after anti-corruption campaigner Alexei Navalny was found guilty of what activists said were trumped up charges and given a suspended sentence of three and a half years. His younger brother was sent to prison, a move that drew comparisons to the Stalin era practice of punishing family members of enemies of the state. Navalny rose to prominence with his investigations of official corruption and played a leading role in organizing anti-Putin demonstrations in Moscow in 2011 and 2012 that drew hundreds of thousands. Navalny, who has been under house arrest since February, violated its terms to attend the rally and was rounded up by police as he approached the site. He later tweeted that police drove him home and blocked him from leaving his apartment. The protesters who gathered on the Manaz Square outside the Kremlin chanted, We are the power and Russia without Putin. Scuffles erupted between the protesters and pro-Putin activists shouting, Those who don't like Russia should go to the United States. The chants reflected the Kremlin's depiction of opposition supporters as Western stooges. Police said they detained about 100 protesters, while activists claimed up to 250 were rounded up. Russian law requires demonstrators to get official clearance for rallies, violators can face prison sentences and heavy fines. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports officials confirm bodies and debris from Air Asia Indonesia flight QZ8051 were spotted off the island of Borneo on Tuesday. The body of a woman was recovered, but search and rescue workers failed to recover a second body due to large waves. The shadow of what looked like a plane and an emergency exit door appeared to be discovered in the nearly 100,000 square mile search zone. Family members cried and some fainted as they watched a live news conference that showed debris from the plane and what appeared to be a body. Air Asia flight QZ8051 was flying to Singapore when it disappeared on Sunday after the pilots requested a flight plan change due to bad weather. The plane was carrying 162 people, mostly from Indonesia. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A report finds it's not okay to just start talking to people you don't know, and a monstrosity is created in the Frito-Lay Laboratory. This is the Onion Week in Review. Local newborn Nathan Jameson surprised the world earlier this morning by irrevocably losing all faith in humanity after just six days. Though he's not yet developed the capacity for speech, spokespeople for the six-day-old baby have confirmed he already knows that humans cannot be trusted and that most people lack self-awareness about their own destructive tendencies. While most people need around 30 or 40 years to truly understand that the vast majority of humanity is shallow and irredeemable, baby Nathan's convinced that he has seen all that he needs to see. People have been nice and even brought him toys and presents, but the fact is, Nathan knows they're all full of shit. And in this week's science report, botanists discover trees are all slowly trying to strangle each other. In other news, a fun-loving turtle is all business when it comes to feeding time, and a party-goer rolls a couple of fat burritos to pass around. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome to the New Year's Eve edition of the program. Our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. That's 
3733 for the final episode of 2014. It's Ian here. And Cantwell. Christopher Cantwell joining me. Thanks for coming in here tonight when you could probably be out starting your drinking already at uh, this point. I mean, I'm presuming you're going to be having a drink or two tonight, Chris. I, I, I plan on it. I um I'm still sort of like doing a mental coin toss over that really? one. Yeah, I had uh, we we actually went out recently to like a comedy show. That's right. Yes. And and I got very intoxicated and <laughs> and grabbed a microphone and made an idiot of myself. I was so so. Can I t- can we talk about what I mean a little bit about what happened? Yeah, don't say exactly what I said. I I don't even want to know. I don't want the video out there. There was a video. I have asked you to delete it. Yeah, and- that was what was surprising to me. So Chris Cantwell is no for the listeners new to the show. Show. Chris, you are sort of known as an anarchist, atheist, a hole. That's right. your personal, I don't know, it's the tagline, tagline on my website. Yeah, yeah. your tagline. Um, and so that's your motto, if you will. That's your the character that uh, you're out, you're putting out there on the internet. And uh, you went to this comedy show. I was there. It was actually last Friday when I took the night off. Went out with you and uh, a demo, and we went out and watched the show. And it was a great show, by the way, here in Keene. And you were just kind of in it throughout the show as one of the audience kind of, I don't know if heckler is the right word, but... I was a participant. Yeah, you were a participatory uh, audience member. And so anybody who was there during the show certainly took notice of, uh, you know, your participation in it with pretty much every comedian that that was up on the stage over the two hours that it was on. And And I think that part was actually went over pretty well. I thought so. Yeah. yeah, it seemed like you were throwing out some, you know, useful barbs and quips and things like that. Yeah. And most of the co- comedians played off you fairly well. Right. Uh, I would say. So then afterward, and you were pretty drunk. Um, you got up and sort of ambled over toward the stage, and I asked permission. Uh, I didn't did. just grab the microphone. I said, yeah. "Hey, I've done this a few times." And so the guy who was hosting the event was very gracious. <laughs> he didn't know what he was getting into. He uh, let you up on the stage, and this was like a charity event to uh, like <laughs> <laughs> like I, when when a demo got me the tickets. I didn't realize it was like an event benefiting charity. I felt guilty, and so I went and I gave some money to the charity later on because it really was a good show. It was. It was a good show. And um, anyway, so it's like this charity event, and you're up there, and you grab the mic, and you tell what it was a very kind of shocking joke uh, to people. (laughs) Which I do sometimes. And I thought it was funny, but uh, some people didn't. And the guy who was running the event actually was so shocked, I think, he stepped up and took the microphone away from you and basically booted you off the stage yeah. at that point. And I caught it all on live streaming uh, via my cell phone because I thought, oh, this is going to be good. And I you know, got up and... Chris is on stage. He doesn't do comedy very often. There should be a video of this. And you actually asked me to remove that video, which was very surprising to me because you you seem like such a uh, you, you embrace the idea of being a crass comedian. Why this video? Why did you want to take it down? I didn't even watch the video. I don't entirely remember what <laughs> happened on the stage. I hate video of me drunk, right? I um I had uh aren't you drunk pretty much every time you're on the stage? No, really? so like I real no, so like when I was um, what about as, the Pork as, Fest, the Porcupine Freedom Festival? I was absolutely when I did Stone when sober? I did uh, Soapbox Idol both times. I made sure I was absolutely wow. sober before I got up there. You're better, a better comedian that way. Yeah, right? I need you know you, to to perform right, and this is I you know I don't drink. Uh, we've done a couple episodes of some garbage podcast drunk, but you know it's just some garbage podcast, right? Uh, but I don't like to perform. Uh, drunk. I like to be very. Uh, it's important with your timing, your comedic yeah. timing, and everything else to be very much in control of what you're doing. Yeah, you don't want to be sloppy on stage. Yeah. So like having a few drinks can sort of like take the edge off of going up on a stage. But I don't mm-hmm. really suffer from that at all anyway. Right. Like sure. when I was doing comedy clubs in New York, I do like open mic nights. I was a nobody comedian. I'm a complete failure as a comedian. But like, <laughs> but I would, I think you're funny, Chris. I mean, I I, I think I'm funny too. A lot know? of people talk crap about. About you but no oh, maybe you're just not there kind of funny right and so but but you know it's partially you know my, my sense of humor is very dark i mean i go up and you know i even at the comedy clubs uh it would be a thing that like half the audience would be laughing and half the audience would be like get him out of here because they don't you know the other people who came in there came in there to see their buddy or whatever they mm-hmm. didn't think that they were going to hear rape jokes and you know child molestation jokes and stuff it's it's a it's a dirty dirty 
game that yeah. I play, you know? And so uh, I should I should know that, first of all, before I go up and do it at McHugh's and Keen, right? <laughs> like these people have been listening to clean comics all night, and then I go up and do this. I know that this is going to be a bad thing. But in any case, so like I didn't even want to see the video because I had, I had um, prior to... Prior to Thanksgiving, I had like I had five weeks sober because I I made another really drunk mistake and I knew I had to sober up again, right? Um, okay. And so the I I was sober for five weeks and then the Monday before Thanksgiving, like I started drinking again, right? Hmm. And so the uh, and and then I started drinking again, thinking like, well, I'm on the nootropics, right? I'm taking these like smart drugs and stuff, and, yeah. and they and they like sort of helped me get off of alcohol, right? Like I was in more in control of my thoughts, and I was like, well, maybe I'll be able to drink more responsibly. No, no. <laughs> Every time out. I start drinking, the same exact thing happens. It's like the first like two weeks, it's like, hey, look, I'm drinking responsibly. Everything's fine. Oh, it's a little social lubricant, and then like, but you know, a month or two into it, You're I'm hard drinking drunk again. and being a moron, full of whiskey. Well, and, that's what Ademo said. He said the whiskey doesn't work for you. Yeah. Because the thing is, yeah, I can drink I can drink beers, I can drink wine most of the night and really not yeah, even like get all that messed up. I like to get a little tipsy, but that's about it. If I if I'm like out of control, that is not cool. I don't like that. Right. But you know, I'm also pretty good after one line of coke, but like I just can't do one line of coke, right? Like it's not how it's not how that's my That's not how people do coke. It's right? not how I do alcohol either. Yeah. So, it's one of these things that for the most part, you know, I'm I'm never going to tell anybody that I'm never drinking again. I think the whole like I'm going to quit drinking for New Year's is the most cliched stupid thing in the world. <laughs> I'm like half tempted to drink tonight just so that I don't do that stupid cliche like I'm going to stop drinking for New Year's because right. I hate Idiots who say that, and then they're drunk on January second, right? I just despise it, and I hate being that guy who's like, "I'm quitting drinking," and then like, you know, a couple months later, I'm drunk. But yeah, um, so I haven't, I hadn't drank since the night of the comedy show. Is sort of the point. I see. And so, so it's been a, but at the same time, uh, it's New week. Year's Eve, right? But then again, you know, it's New Year's Eve, and then I don't know, February is going to be Valentine's Day. I mean, there's always right, some there's excuse always to, to get drink. drunk. And it was like, you know, I had sobered up for a little while uh, when I was across the street. And, you know, you guys came over for the housewarming party and you'd asked me, like, you know, why are you sober at your own housewarming party? I'm like, there's always some excuse to drink. And yeah. this is just one more of them. And so, you know, is New Year's Eve like the excuse <laughs> that I take or do I not drink or do I be a responsible adult and not get my, you know, maybe well, I start the new year off without a hangover for the first time in 20 years. <laughs> Well, of course, you can be a responsible adult and drink, right? But that's the problem, is that you have a tough time stopping yourself after a period of time goes by, right? Like, like I drink in order to not be a responsible adult, right? Like, I think that's, like, part of the point, right? Like, I'm going to get drunk and, like, <laughs> and let go of all this responsible adult crap. Yeah. No, I understand it. Let's come back to the topic okay. here. And maybe our listeners out there have experience with this. They want to weigh in. Feel free. We're here live, by the way. It's New Year's Eve. Toll-free number is 855-450. Free. We, uh, we'll take your calls about anything as well. Plus, uh, coming up, Stefan Molyneux, the latest really ridiculous things that have uh, come Come out of his show recently. Uh, I, we, I am so sick of this because I stick up for really Molyneux shocking. all the time, and then he does this to me, and I yeah, get so upset. You got to stop. You got to stop sticking up for this guy. Uh, Mike is in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Chris Cantwell. Hello, Mike. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. Go ahead with your thoughts. Okay. Um, so uh, a while back, uh, about half a year ago, I got a DWI, and. Uh, you know, I tried to get them to prove they legitimately, you know, rule me, whatever. They, they're not responsive, all that stuff. So I took a plea deal for reckless driving. And uh, so I got a court date coming up, but, like, you know, it's getting closer. You know, like, I've already pled guilty to it. I'm going in for sentencing, but, you know, I really want to argue to them that I, I can't support y'all. I cannot give you money. Even if I have it, I cannot give it to you. So is like, this like a principled thing where you don't want to give money to the state? Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they do nothing for me. I don't, I, I can't support them. Well, wait a minute. And, okay, just to clarify something. So what happens in Texas if you don't give them the fine money? Because here in New Hampshire, they'll put you in jail at $50 a day credit towards uh, the, the total amount of fines. So tell me the rest of the story here in a moment, Mike. We'll uh, bring you back. Our toll-free number 855 450 free and can you refuse to pay the fine if you take a plea deal is that not part of the deal we'll come we back with more here in moments now. this is free talk lives new year's eve edition Ugh. 
cold winter weather. It makes my skin so dry, itchy, and irritated. Can I get some help, please, for this winter skin of mine? Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing has the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available. Its seven moisturizers help heal skin, so you'll stop itching and start feeling relief fast. Ah, my skin feels like it's been on vacation, even with 10 inches of snow outside. Itch-free, worry-free, Cortisone 10. Use as directed. Hi, I'm John Rainey, Chief Financial Officer of United Airlines, and I'm honored to be the National Chair for the 2015 March for Babies campaign for the March of Dimes. United is a proud supporter of the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more mothers have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Please join us in working together for stronger, healthier babies. Visit marchofdimes.org. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Hey, I'm Ian Freeman, one of the hosts of Free Talk Live. I created Free Talk Live in 2002 as an alternative to traditional talk radio. I wanted a show where anyone could call in and bring up any topic without fear of being screened out. Combined with our libertarian, voluntarist viewpoints, Free Talk Live is a unique syndicated radio show heard on FM and AM radio stations, coast to coast and beyond. I moved from my birthplace of Florida to New Hampshire in 2006 as part of the Free State Project, I'm also the program director of LRN.FM, which I launched in 2009 to create a place to present the best liberty-oriented audio programs from around the globe. I perform liberty outreach of all sorts and have done civil disobedience, non-cooperation, and run for office multiple times. Much of that's covered on my blog at freekeen.com. Thank you for listening to our shows, and if you want to support our work, please visit amp.freetalklive.com and contribute just $5 a month to our effective liberty outreach. That's amp dot freetalklive.com so you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of free talk live and you're still hungry for liberty oriented audio content did you know that we have another 24 7 audio stream at lrn.fm the liberty radio network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock in addition to recorded content you'll also hear live shows like free talk live originating from our keen new hampshire studio So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit LibertyOnTheRocks.org today to get started. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the New Year's Eve edition of the program. You are welcome to call in to talk about whatever happens to be on your mind. There's actually some pretty interesting news out of Ferguson, Missouri tonight. I hope we get the chance to talk about that. Of course, your phone calls come first here. You can dial in, talk about anything you want at 855-450-FREE. We started talking about New Year's Eve. That's the night it is, and uh, we're discussing what our plans are to you know, do after the show. We're done here at 10 o'clock Eastern time, so 
in advance of the uh, the midnight hour. Of course, many of you listening to the program, it's already past midnight. Some folks over in uh, in England, for instance, and uh, in that area that are, are regular listeners, they have already entered 2015. So a happy new year to you if you're out there listening live or listening later on via podcast. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And I also want to let you know how to get some coffee for free, an entire pound of it, as a matter of fact. All you have to do is go to coffee.freetalklive.com, and that's where you can get signed up for the auto ship program for BuzzBox Coffee. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica. This is great coffee, and it's competitively priced with other high-end coffees. Now, free is obviously very competitively priced, but it's just the first pound that's free. Then you pay for the other ones that come after that. You can cancel your subscription at any time, and in order to get the free pound, you do have to cover the shipping cost. But otherwise, uh, you'll get to try out this excellent coffee that people have been raving about. Listeners and hosts of the show love BuzzBox Coffee, and you can go and get yours right now over at coffee.freetalklive.com. Plus, you can feel good because when you're buying BuzzBox Coffee through Free Talk Live, that means that a portion of the profits will go to benefit people in very difficult parts of the world in which to live. We're helping folks with microloans via kiva.org. So for every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com, we can fund one new microloan every single month for, for every 10 listeners. So very cool program and great coffee. Go to coffee freetalklive.com as we continue here ian and chris cantwell in the studio with you we've got mike in texas mike you said you got a dui recently was it your first one uh yeah it was my first one first dui you took a plea deal and now you're saying you don't want to pay the fine correct yeah i mean i, mean, I went to court four times challenging them trying to get them to give me the right discovery you know prove your jurisdiction all this stuff and they just shut me down every time <laughs> So yeah, finally, all, you know, the, the, it, it, I went to jury. I went to my jury trial, and I was like, "Okay, are y'all willing to accept any kind of deal?" And hold uh, on a so hold I, on. Wait, wait, wait. I, I think I think he was going to get to it. Continue. I'm sorry. One for a second. Um, well, I went to my jury trial and asked him, you know, are y'all willing to accept any kind of deal? And I suggested reckless driving, which is up to 30 days in jail, $200 fine, compared to a DUI, which is six months in jail, and Three thousand dollar fine because I just felt, you know, the jury pool stacked. Yeah. So, so, anyway, I see. so you went to deal. so you went to jury trial and then after the selecting the jury before trial, you went to try to negotiate a plea deal. Uh, well, actually, I, uh, no, it was before we picked the jury. He did, he did almost the exact same thing that I did. Uh, what was his name again? I'm sorry. Uh, this is Mike. In Mike, Texas. Mike. So I uh, I went through a similar situation. I got a, a, a DWI in New York, and uh, they had made me a number of plea offers, and they they made me another plea offer right before we went to jury selection. And it was and it's one of these things, and they do this with the plea deals all the time, mm -hmm. that they're hanging quite the hammer over your head, and then they at the last minute will say. Say, hey, here's this much smaller situation. You could take your chances with the jury, or you can cop out now and get. Uh, and I'm not saying cop out is a bad th in a negative context. I'm just saying that you're you're taking a plea. Um, and I understand why you did that. I ended up doing the same thing. I actually ended up spending a month in jail over this on the mm -hmm. on the last one. So what was the deal, by the way, Mike, that you ended up taking? Uh, two hundred dollar fine and thirty or three hundred dollars in court costs. Okay. So you you know worse. you oh. know what the outcome is though you're not waiting to find out well, what your sentence you know, is no inter well just to clarify no ignition that, interlock that, that's what system me and the or? prosecutor no, well that's what me and the prosecutor agreed on was two hundred dollar fine three hundred dollar court costs so the judge still hasn't accepted it yet because we have to go to sentencing you know here in like ten days or something so there's no other um, specs like I know a friend of mine got a DUI for first time down in Florida he took a plea he ended up with an ignition interlock system for six months so that, you don't you don't well, have anything what, but, but a fine give everybody else uh, yeah I mean all these other people that get DUIs they get they get the interlock device like part of their bond uh, like like my DUI was point zero eight seven and it's point zero eight and there's a margin of error of point zero zero nine which I really should I don't know Maybe well, I should have it's tough it, to go up yeah, against the DUI. I don't want to pay him now. It's well, I don't blame uh, I don't, you. Now, just to clarify, what's the rule in Texas? Uh, do you know it, what happens when you don't pay? Yeah. Well, yeah. This is in the county. They will they will come find me. They will knock on my door every day, and then take me to jail until it 
pays out. You know, I don't know if it's 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it is a day. It would be useful to find that out, you know, whatever that amount is. That way you have some idea of what you're dealing with and whether or not it might be worthwhile to uh, to do that. I mean, if it's 10 bucks a day, that might not be worth it. Versus fifty. Yeah, I mean, if you're if if they're giving you fifty bucks a day, I don't know what your income is like. I mean, you know, maybe you take a week off from work and you go sit in there for a little while and take a nap. Uh, yeah, a little little <laughs> spiritual well, retreat. Well, I don't know how they that. treat you down there in Texas. Uh, I kind of want to go into court and be like, you know, I don't, I cannot, you know, I can't morally, it's a, it's, I can't give you money. I mean, maybe I could serve the community some other way. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no reason to send me to jail and force all these other people to pay nobody wants me to go to jail i didn't hurt anybody yeah uh, is, is I mean, it possible just to clarify because... something is it possible that the plea deal could be undone by you doing that well i mean the judge n never has to accept the plea deal in the first place i mean even though me and the prosecutor agreed on something the judge can give me the max fine and the 30 days in is jail. that right you haven't uh you haven't allocuted yet then right allocuted what does that mean Allocute is when you uh, you basically testify that you have done the uh, the crime in question. When I took my plea deal in the last DUI case, I had to allocute, and then they gave me like a, a period of time before I had to actually go in and serve my sentence. So I had to allocute, and then if I had like caught another charge or done something that violated some terms of the condition, they would have revoked my deal and held my allocution as evidence against me. So like you would have gotten yeah, up uh, before the court and be like, yes, I was drunk, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm guilty and all that yada 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 stuff. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. Okay, but I did say I was guilty in court. See, now that's interesting. As, as, that. as somebody who actually regularly does outreach about plea deals and the pro in the in the process, I don't honestly know what the rule is as far as you're saying the judge can just impose whatever he wants. That short circuits as the whole process the of a plea deal, huh? Well, as long as it's part of the statute, I mean, like, if she gives a sentence... No, I see what you're saying, but that's, you know, I this is new to me. I've never really seen oh. that occur, so I'm not saying you're wrong or anything like that, or maybe it happens in Texas, but it doesn't happen everywhere. Um, the idea being that, okay, you've come to a deal with this prosecutor, that should be the deal. The idea that the judge can just go ahead and, you know, slam you with the maximum uh, sentence um, over and above I, that I plea deal. It. I did see that this actual judge break a plea deal where the the prosecutor said 270 days interlock device, mm -hmm. and the judge said, no, this was pretty serious. It needs to be 360 days. Well, so if, a, if at that point, lawyer, if the judge tries to change the deal, then that's off the it. table. Okay, so if right. you if you mm -hmm. go in in front of him and you say, look, I'm morally opposed to paying this fine. I'm willing to do community service, but I won't give you or, or sit in jail, but I won't pay the fine. And then the judge says, well, okay, then I'm going to impose the maximum sentence. Then that's not the deal that you reached. And at that point, you should be able to call for your jury trial. Mike, let us know what happens. And thanks for the call tonight. More coming up here in moments. You can take control. This is Free Talk Live. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. 
It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, and it's the New Year's Eve edition of the program. We're here to take your calls about whatever's on your mind. You just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We started out talking about drinking. It led to a phone call about a DUI charge in Texas where a guy is planning or he's planning on taking the plea deal, but he's concerned that if he refuses to pay the fine, that the judge might just go ahead and impose the maximum sentence upon him. And I am not an attorney. I'd like to make it clear. You know, I can't give legal advice. And it wouldn't surprise me if the judge has the ability to just disregard the plea deal and go ahead and impose a full sentence. But I would think that if the judge is going to break the plea deal, that at that point the individual has the ability to take something to jury trial and i wonder chris if you know what you pointed out as well since he'd already signed the plea deal then could they then use that against him at the jury trial and that's an excellent question yeah generally speaking i know in my case that that would have happened so i made a I made a plea deal and i didn't have to go in to uh i didn't have to go in for sentencing right away i was actually i pled guilty to uh driving while intoxicated while I was running for Congress. And I said, well, I've got to wait until the, I got to wait until after the election. I can't go to jail right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so they let me stay out, but they said, you know, you catch a charge, you violate any of these terms or conditions, then uh, we will take you to trial and you will, uh, and, and you will, and your allocution will be used against you. Now they wouldn't have been able to just like take my guilty plea and then sentence me. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they would have taken me to trial and used my allocution against me as evidence, you know. So if you got a confession, that's not a good thing when you're trying to go in there and say, hey, as in, as what is in his case, he said he's got a point zero eight eight BAC rating, and the margin of error on that machine per per the manufacturer's specifications. This is the guy who called, not your case, right? Well, in my case, I was a point zero nine, mm -hmm. right? So it was very it was a very similar circumstance that I was really considering going to trial on it. And uh, I, I copped out at the last minute because I just I was facing four and a half years in prison if I didn't. It it's going to be hard to go up in front of a jury for DUI. I mean, they're just not going to be sympathetic. Yeah, I was I was looking at four and a half years in prison if I got found guilty at trial and being a convicted felon, or I could do 45 days in a county jail and 
be a convicted misdemeanor offender. So I copped out at the last minute. And it's a good thing I did because, you know, I don't want to have my guns taken away. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a convicted felon. I don't want to be answering that on job applications and whatnot. So. But you would think, though, if the judge were to disregard the plea deal and you were to then say, whoa, well, then I retract, you know, because this was the deal. We had a deal and now you're going to go back on the deal. So no deal. Let's you know start over again and we'll go ahead and have the, the jury trial. If they tried to bring that up to the jury, like, oh, well, he already admitted he was guilty because he was going to take this plea deal. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. I yeah. mean, you get told that. when. But you... I think you could also talk to the jury and, you know, explain, look, hey, you know, this is what the plea deal process was. I was you know, I willing, was coerced. Yeah, I was willing to go through this, uh, even though blah blah blah. So I don't think it would be the end of the line if you did that. I think that it would still, you know, if you didn't want to face the maximum penalty, then the only chance to not do that is to go to the jury at that point. So you might as well, you know. There's, oh, oh yeah, certainly. Usually the usually the reason to not go to a jury is because you might face a more harsh penalty, right? Because right. the uh, what is it? They call it like the jury tax or something like that, where the judge will sentence harsher at a jury trial rather than what the sentence would have been at a bench trial to right, punish like what you. what happened with Rich Paul. He basically got yeah. a year for doing a trial. And I got 50% uh, more of a sentence as well yeah. because I went to jury. In fact, I beat one of the charges at the jury and I got a harsher <laughs> sentence. Uh, so I had two charges I was facing when I went to the bench trial i was found guilty of both but at the jury trial i was only found guilty of one of them but yet my sentence was 50 percent harsher wow. at the jury trial so it happens all the time but if you know if that's what's going to happen is the judge is going to say all right well you know i'm going to disregard this plea and hit you with the maximum sentence you might as well try for the jury at that point because you've got nothing to lose yeah so that's kind of where i was coming from earlier our toll free number tonight is 855 450 free and maybe you want to tell us what your new year's resolutions are and how did you do last year on your new year's resolutions don't do it don't call us with your new year's no. resolutions call us <laughs> call with something more interesting than your new year's resolutions because you're not going to follow through on them anyway we did already you know. chris did you even bother or do you even bother trying i don't even remember my new year's right? resolutions yeah. like you know i'm like i'm gonna and then i'm like i have a hangover what happened <laughs> let's go to the phones your calls and thoughts jimmy's in arizona you're on free talk live hey, how you doing? jimmy what's on your mind tonight i got two things on my mind uh part of the one i want to talk about was uh yesterday i got kicked out of walmart and uh that's that's oh, that's that's too bad and i understand i mean that happens all the time because they, they walmart has this really strict like dress code and they're really uh picky about who they let in there yeah well they want to have you have pants on i mean so that helps that's true what, uh, well, what was the he, reason well i had pants on but here's the thing is so it was about seven thirty in the morning and i was uh, i was drunk as a skunk you know <laughs> and uh yeah they said i was uh I was staring at the women's panties for too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, they got a time limit, and I, I guess like if you're in the panty section for more than two hours, <laughs> they get upset with you. Yeah, I I uh I had a similar problem, and I didn't even realize like panty sniffing is not nearly as interesting when they're new. Yeah, if I was to bring Milford home some panties that didn't smell right, you know, she'd be upset with me. <laughs> Milford is your wife, by the way. Right, the, uh, yeah, the plus-size hand and foot model. Uh, That's right, yeah. yeah. So how did they so, kick you out? I mean, did loss control come up to you, or who was it that you know gave you the news? How did that happen? Well, yeah, some big fat woman just came up, and she, she tore the panties out of my hand and said, you know, get out of here, you know, and I was like, I ain't doing nothing wrong. Oh, you, you know? said you were just looking at the panties. Now you, Now they were in your hands, so you were closely examining them, it sounds like. Well, I, I feel like, well, I got something else to talk about. That's just too much time about them panties. All right, fair enough. Uh, that does sound a little so embarrassing for you, Jimmy. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Yeah, well, yeah, yesterday I was listening to y'all's show, and uh, I don't know if you know uh, Christopher Cantwell, but this is a nationwide show, you know, and yeah. I don't know if you ever listened to it, but yesterday some lady called y'all's show. I've heard it show. a couple of times. Yeah. Uh -huh. Her name was Sammy, and... Uh, she said a bunch of mean things about me. Oh, and, yeah, uh, that's right. There was somebody who called in uh, to criticize the fact that we even take your phone calls. This yeah, lady, it sounded yeah. like she knew you. She does. Well, she's mad at me because I owe her some money. Uh, and, I'll do uh, it. Don't be a calling. deadbeat. Well, How much money? Thing, 
Uh, well, that's the thing is we never came to a, an agreement, you know, and, and, and she I, I, she never agreed, you know. She just wanted some money because – Hold on. Well, she I, wanted I like money? A, I thought you owe her money. Well, well that's I mean, why he owes her money because she wanted some. Yeah, yeah. Well, so she's a she's an animal psychic and a a bug whisperer <laughs> and an animal <laughs> sex therapist. Yeah, I, and so here's the thing: is I found her on the internet. I got uh, about thirty five and a half goats, and uh, I wanted to know if if they was interested in going to business with me. You know, so I needed that animal uh, psychic and animal sex therapist. You know. And uh, she refused to do any readings for me, you know. Mm. That sounds like yeah, the, I, the debt is no good, but maybe there's more to this. Well, it's difficult, you know, because when I told her, she's like, what kind of business are you getting into? I said, well, I'm trying to open up a, a goat brothel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, just to clarify, would the goat brothel be for other goats or would it be for humans who want to have sex with goats? I'm not one to judge. You know? <laughs> Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Toll free number 855 450 free. <laughs> Jimmy's funny, man. Yeah, good call. Good call. All right, let's go to Kyle. He is also in Texas via Skype. Hello, Kyle. Howdy. Hey. I'd like to uh, wish all of you porcupines up in the Shire a happy new year. Yes, I imagine there will be many a happy New Year going across uh, the Shire tonight. Indeed. Last last year I was not on the New Year's Eve show because I went to uh, a fairly large New Year's party in Manchester, which is happening again, but I will not be attending this year because, you know, responsibilities and such. I'm glad you're here tonight too, Chris Cantwell. So uh, thanks for joining us, Kyle. What did you want to talk about tonight? Uh, this is actually directed to uh, Christopher Cantwell. Um, I'm one of the regular subscribers on your blog, yet I don't think you've ever written about the applicability of just war theory. Do you think that just war theory, particularly juice at bellum, should be publicly discussed as part of the ongoing use of force debates? All right, uh, we'll have to come back in a moment here and talk about what a just war theory is and then juice at bellum. I'm not sure what that was. Maybe, uh, maybe I misheard that. So stand by, Kyle. We'll get all that detail in a moment. 855-450-FREEZE, the toll-free number. You can bring up whatever you want on Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to may be even more nervous than you are. And the way things are now, your references have never been more important. Here are three tips. First, know that employers are checking. Every hire is under the microscope these days. Second, they won't just be checking references you provide. Figure that all of your ex-employers will get a call and be asked, would you hire him or her again? 
again. Third, assume you will be Googled. So before you apply, remove all those party animal photos from your Facebook page. Even if you're not in the job market, effective communication skills have never been more important with money and attention so scarce now. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day -day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can ring in the new year with Ian and Chris here on Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything you want to discuss. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You are free to be inebriated on the air tonight and any night on Free Talk Live. There's no prohibition on that around here. The only thing you can't do is let loose an F-bomb or an S-bomb. We have to get rid of you if you do that. Which but, uh, you are exponentially more likely to do when intoxicated. But we're pretty good with that dump button, so we will just hang up on your yep. dumb face hence the warning so here's our toll-free number it's 855-450 free we also have skype skype username is lrn.fm and if you like what we're doing on free talk live one of the things you can do to help us out is to shop with free talk live you may have some extra money after the holidays you want to blow it well go to shop.freetalklive.com and get stuff uh, we've got a lot of it because Links to Amazon are there at shop.freetalklive.com. And when you enter Amazon through the links you'll find there, then Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. So it's the same great Amazon experience you're used to. It's just that Free Talk Live gets a cut of their profits when you enter through shop.freetalklive.com. We've got Kyle back in Texas. Kyle, you said you had a question for Chris Cantwell specifically regarding the just war theory. And then you said some word I'd never heard of before. Juiced bellum? What was it that you had said there? Sure. Uh, the Latin term jus ad bellum can be translated as the so-called right to war, or at least to start it. And what okay. I wanted to ask Mr. Cantwell was if he thought that just war theory, particularly jus ad bellum, should be publicly discussed as part of the ongoing uh, use of force debates. Okay, so can we define what a, a just war theory let is? Me, first? Let me riff on this and then tell me if I've got the understanding correct. So, I mean, during the, the Ron Paul campaign, I know Adam Kokesh went off a little bit about Christian just war theory. And, and the idea basically being, I, I think it was even the Catholic Church had sort of said that there was, uh, you know, certain circumstances under which it was okay for one nation to wage war against another. And I don't remember what all of them were, but it was something to the effect of, you know, the nation had been provoked by the other nation, uh, the nation had a reasonable expectation of winning the conflict, and I don't remember what all the other circumstances were. How does that assessment sound to you, sir? Sure. The the five, according to Wikipedia, the five principles of Jews said Bellum are proper authority, just cause, uh, a decent probability of success, uh, proportionality of force, which I know you've written about, and uh, the, it has to be the last resort. Okay, so um, look, I mean, those things can be taken into account in a, in a in an individual's reasoning, and I can understand why they would be. And these things, uh, the concepts that you're talking about, are things that you know I I take into consideration generally in the course of my everyday life, right? I don't jump into conflicts that are going to get me killed, right? I don't mm -hmm. I don't uh, engage in violence with somebody uh, generally if I don't if I have a choice in the matter, and if I uh, even when I lose a choice in the matter, you know, I'll generally tend to run away from a violent conflict that I don't stand a good chance of 
succeeding in rather rather than actually engaging in a conflict. Um, but as far as what the the Catholic Church has said about anything, I don't care. And as far as uh, <laughs> and as far as uh, proper authority. Look, I have the proper authority to do violence against those who do violence against me. I don't believe that the just you war don't. theory, as it as it uh, as it pertains to government, has any proper authority because I don't believe in any proper authority for the state. Hmm. I like that answer. Okay, good. I, I just kind of wanted your thoughts on that. There and uh, if, if you don't mind me uh, kind of switching the topics a little bit, I did have another question for you, Mr. Cantwell. Yeah. Uh, do you think the freedom train analogy? is still accurate or even appropriate in describing the supposed relationship between minarchists and anarchists. So I think you're talking about uh, something I had said a long time ago, or maybe it's somebody else's quote. There is a, there's a thing uh, I said, all aboard the Liberty train, uh, uh, stopping at constitutionism, minarchism, and uh, anarcho-capitalism or something to that effect. Uh, stop at... Uh, ex- Leave at constitutionism for all other stops. There are no other stops after anarcho-capitalism or something to that effect. Does that sound? Is that what you're yes, referring yes. to? Yes, yes. I mean, the, the idea ultimately goes back to the LP back in the 80s, I think. But yes, that's a general idea. Yeah. So I mean, basically, the the idea being that you, it, along the path of liberty, you're going to make another number of stops, <laughs> and then, and uh, you. I don't know a lot of former anarcho-capitalists. Is I guess the sort of the point that I've mm-hmm. made there. I don't know a lot of people who. Uh, came to the ideas of uh, absolute voluntary interaction and decided, you know, this coercion thing is pretty cool. I think I'm going to go back to that. Yeah, so I'd say that that uh, that analogy still stands. Very good. They, there you go, Kyle. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's talk to Pete. He's in Florida. You're on Free Talk Live, Pete. Pete in Florida. Going once. Pete in Hello, Florida. Beach. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Pete, isn't this Pete from California? Yeah, it's Long Beach. I don't know how the guy thought that it was Long Beach, Florida. How oh, can you he has those? Arlen what? Beach, Florida written down here. So, yeah, sometimes things get lost in translation. <laughs> Go ahead with your thoughts, Pete. <laughs> oh, man, I was going to talk to you about the police. I was going to ask you and Christopher Cantwell, uh, when's the time that there's a just war to uh, shoot the police in the face? I'm just kidding. I was I was joking. You're not but, kidding uh, about that. You always call about that stuff. I mean, basically, whatever. Right, no, you know, this is this is the new year of uh, submission, willful submission to uh, brutality of the police department and and uh, no, violation of our It's not a new year. Life. You've been submitting the Communism, whole time. Communism, woo! Communist America. Pete, you've been submitting the Amen. whole time. Don't pretend like this is the first time you've ever submitted. It, it sounds to me like Pete took you up on the thing about calling in an Eber. Communism, yeah, America. <laughs> have you been, have you been drinking the communion wine again, Pete? <laughs> no, you got jokes. I had to kick you in the. You know. Well, thanks for the self censoring. Hey, well, hey, anyway, um, oh, these are your sound effects. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> hey, Chris, hey, Christopher Cantwell, can I talk to you? Hey, Christopher Cantwell, let me ask you something. What's that? Hey, if uh, if the police knock on your door and stuff, say, hey, you know, we got to talk to you, are you going to be silent to them or are you going to tell them get beeped, get a warrant? Uh, depends on what uh, depends on what's going on. A lot of uh, times, you're better off not even answering the door. In my opinion, I'll well, I'll generally yeah. answer the door for them, uh, and then I'll just ask them what they want, and then they'll tell me. And if it's like to take me into custody, uh, you know, if it's for if they want to take me into custody for something that I'm going to spend the rest of my life in prison for, you know, I might reach for my gun. If uh, if they want to put me uh, on trial for something that I think I could beat, you know, I they're might not going to tell you in them, advance, Chris. You know, I like, I like, I'm the same way, Christopher Cantwell. But hey, the uh, I mean, uh, what time would you not answer the door? You generally don't answer it. Uh, oh, I, that's what I said. I said I would, I might not answer. It just all depends. The cops did knock on my door answer? the other day, and I did not answer the door. And then what I did was I called them, and I said, well, "What do you want? You know, you can tell me on this recorded uh, line what it is that you want." And turns that's out they're looking to serve. There. Turns out they were looking to serve Derek J with paperwork uh, in that particular case. But hey, thanks well, for the call, not, Pete. That's, 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 Good luck with your submission. 855-450-FREE. Let's talk to Nick. He's in Ohio. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Nick. Yeah, hey. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys, since we've got a CC on the <clears throat> on the air here, um, is there any project in the works in New Hampshire to build, like, a sketch comedy troupe by chance? Hmm. There's been a lot of talk about that over the years. Because and- there is so much fodder in oh, the Liberty yeah. Movement. 
for sketch comedy. Like, I mean, Stefan Molyneux, how easy would that be? Yeah, right? uh, it has it has come up a number of times. It's something that I've really always wanted to do, and I've got I've got sketches. I've got plots for sketches in somebody's like a folder. Somebody's got to write it. I mean, number you know. one, somebody's got to write it up. The f- the recording part isn't that hard. We've got people with cameras. We've got people who probably would be willing to take parts if they were asked to do it. Yeah. But right, usually, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, what it takes here is a go getter, is someone who's going to be the doer, the the person who's going to head it up, um, to really step up and say, "All right, this is the idea I have." This is what I want to do. Who wants to help out? And then usually it's not hard to find people who are willing to step up and help out. I will give you real life examples of this because it has happened already uh, in the history of the Free State Project of the Liberty Movement, people coming to New Hampshire. If you look on YouTube for the CRAP campaign, C-R-A-P, CRAP, the CRAP campaign, the C-R-A-P is an acronym, but it stands for something different on every CRAP campaign video. So it doesn't (laughs) have the same definition every time, but it's always CRAP campaign. And I think there was like two or three of these. And they're really well-written, well-produced uh, sketch comedy, basically, that uh, is you know very, very good. And that was done probably five years ago, four or five years ago at this point. And it'd be great to see that make a comeback or something else like it make a comeback. But, you know, it has to have that person who's got the real drive to get behind it. And, and more, it has to be somebody who's willing to do more than just talk about it at a party or something like that. And there've been, there's been a lot of talk at parties about this particular idea, but not a whole lot of doing. But how off color are these uh, comedy sketches? Cause I had something in mind that perhaps would hit a little bit more below the belt. Um, These have been pretty f- fairly clean, I would say. Yeah, I, mean, we, I think we watched profanity. a couple of them on Thanksgiving or something. Yeah. There was the thing about the guy's property taxes that they were like could raise it to a million dollars or something right. like that. Millionaire Jethro Jenkins, uh, the property tax thing, the Tamworth Millionaire Program. That's what it's called, Tamworth Millionaire Program. <laughs> if you look for that one, oh, that yeah, one's yeah, pretty I funny. Was, I was thinking more of like Stefan Molyneux call-in show pedophile, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Anything, man. I mean, come on up here. Get it started. What are you waiting for? Uh good question we'll see you up here thanks nick for the call there's more coming up here hour number two is on the way this is free talk live free talk live has partnered with amazon the largest internet retailer imagine a department store category and amazon has it books electronics office products furniture jewelry automotive toys clothing sporting goods and dozens of other categories now you can shop and support free talk live by entering amazon through our website go to shop.freetalklive.com and amazon will send us a portion of your purchase you're going to do the shopping anyway so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com that's shop.freetalklive.com Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, December 30th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,185. Silver around $16.12. 
and Bitcoin is trading around $314.87. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Extreme weather, from droughts lasting for weeks and torrential rainstorms robbing the country of vital crops for food, to snowstorms of 70 inches plus stopping cities in their tracks. Supporting your family through these difficult times is what eFoods Direct does. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, a New Mexico police officer and a friend were arrested for allegedly raping a woman on Christmas Day. 26-year-old Milan police officer James Waters and friend Jesse Terrazas are accused of driving around in a vehicle with a 20-year-old woman and pulling her hair forcibly and pushing her mouth in an attempt to get her to perform oral sex. A second officer was present for part of the event, but will not be charged because... They cite a three-hour briefing held in St. Louis this week by U.S. cybersecurity firm Norse, which provided the FBI with information linking several individuals, including a former Sony employee, to the hack. Despite the new evidence, the FBI is holding firm to the North Korean connection. The Sony hack reached its pinnacle when the company pulled the satirical film The Interview from theatrical release, based on threats made by the hackers due to the film's comedic portrayal of an assassination attempt on North Korea's leader. Late Tuesday, thousands of Russian protesters gathered in the streets to condemn the conviction of a popular Kremlin critic. Alexei Novani and his brother Oleg were convicted of stealing over $500,000 from two firms and sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Navalny's sentence was suspended, but his brother's was not. Beginning on January 1st, 21 states will see an increase in minimum wages. Alaska, Arkansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota recently approved increases during the November election. Critics of the pay raises say it will force businesses to cut down on hours and hiring. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, December 31st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A new genetically modified version of tall fescue turf grass has been cleared for cultivation by the USDA without a study of the long-term effects on the environment. The USDA released a statement saying the process used to create the product does not involve the use of a plant pass for gene transfer, so they have no authority to regulate the crop. The Capitol Press reported that an anonymous breeder warned about cross-pollination between the turf grass and other common grasses. A resolution calling for the creation of a Palestinian state and an end to Israeli occupation has failed after no votes by the United States and Australia. Five nations, including the UK, Lithuania, Nigeria, Korea, and Rwanda, abstained from voting. U.S. Ambassador Samantha Power called the resolution a staged confrontation, and U.K. Ambassador to the U.N., Mark Weil Grant, said he was disappointed that the normal and necessary negotiation did not take place on this occasion. Russia criticized the United States for attempting to monopolize the decision-making process. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more details, just go to thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Wednesday, December 31st, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you to spread liberty with a smile. 
Hamburglar urges a Senate subcommittee to rubble, rubble, rubble. This is Doyle Redland reporting. Hamburger advocate and convicted felon Hamburglar denounced a prison system he called rubble, rubble, rubble as he testified before the Senate subcommittee on penal reform. Hamburglar, convicted in 1998 of breaking and entering a McDonald's hamburger franchise in South Beloit, Wisconsin, and currently serving a sentence of three to five years, made this impassioned plea before being interrupted by U.S. Senator Bob Smith of Rhode Island. Certainly there is room for improvement in our prison system, but I would hardly call the current situation robble. After delivering his message to the subcommittee, Hamburglar was promptly placed in chains and returned to prison to serve out the remainder of his sentence in solitary confinement. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here. For the final episode of 2014, with you in studio, it's Ian. Cantwell. That toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com to enjoy the features waiting for you there. Uh, Coming up tonight, some pretty amazing news out of Ferguson where protesters have stormed the police department earlier today. Dozens of arrests have resulted. People have been pepper sprayed. Apparently the police did not want to answer their complaints. Uh, We will get into that when we get the chance. Of course, your phone calls come first. Plus, the latest just madness from uh, Stefan Molyneux that a lot of people I think are going to find pretty disappointing. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Also, our arrest down in New York City, it looks like it, after the murder of two police. We'll uh, get into as much of that as we can here, but we're going to your phone calls first. Al is listening in Ohio. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Chris Cantwell. Hey, Al? Ian. Happy New Year. Hey, Al. Hey, welcome. Happy New Year. Go Hi, ahead. Al. Go ahead. Here, Go ahead with your thoughts. Let's talk about the uh, police. Were you surprised as I was that they were so angry at the politicians? That the police were angry at the politicians? Are you talking about New York City or what? I just in general. Haven't you read any cop threads? Well, I uh, no, I, I don't uh, read a lot of like police blogs, but I have seen oh, a lot good. of news about the uh, the new NYPD in particular, but police across the country are sort of getting ticked off, especially at the federal government because the the Obama administration uh, they they perceive that the Obama administration is not in support of them. But you know what? I what just you, think wait, wait, what uh, are they talking about? I mean, there was another story in the news today. I've got it in my show prep here about how there's actually been an increase in the the military equipment being shuffled over to police departments since Ferguson, there's been like a dramatic increase in the amount of military equipment being sent over there. So you'd think they'd be happy about Barack Obama. He's the one who's signing off on that, isn't he? Well, if, if the data mattered, if the facts mattered, then we wouldn't be having this discussion. Good point. Right? It's but, all about <laughs> the emotion and, you know, Democrats well, are bad. The thing blah, is that the really? law enforcement, uh, you know, the pro law enforcement community is largely Republican. So of course yeah. these people attempt to turn them against a democratic president. If there was a, if there was a republican in the white house this wouldn't be going on mm. and uh i would say that the the police uh i think they should just shut up and obey the authority right i mean <laughs> that's what they always tell us you know instead you know instead of saying screw the ss why don't you just obey the law right well why don't they right. just uh, shut up and obey their political masters they don't they're they're just as mad as we are but if you read those police threads and you compare and contrast to libertarian threats, you see voices of reason on the libertarian threats. On well, the cop threats, they're just out for blood and angry at politicians. It is scary, man. Oh, I believe you. Where are you reading this? Like Police One or what? Where are you going for this? Uh, the, 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 one, the one I follow is called Cop Humor. <laughs> God. I'm Sounds gonna, like you could I, have fun with very, it, Chris. I may funny, just maybe. have to go sign up for that one. Is this a website or a Facebook page, or where you? What is a Facebook Facebook page? Okay. Now, I see, now the one thing about some of these police sites, you, one of the things you've got to be careful of is that you know sometimes you ne- you may not be reading the comments of a cop, but the thing about Police One is that they, from what I understand, they actually vet all of their members to make sure they're actual cops. So I think it's most interesting to read when you know 100% that the person commenting is actually a law enforcement officer. And obviously, if you're on a Facebook page, you know it could just be a troll. Maybe it's really a cop. Humor is for cops themselves, for, you know, like, 
something to read while they're eating donuts. So <laughs> no, I understand. So good, what you're saying is this was written good, by the cop. You're saying that the page itself, or, or at least it's marketed to them at yeah. the very least. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I imagine well, that they enjoy it. What they're actually feeling, you know. I got gotcha. you. Well, so thanks for sharing I that. You guys look at a cop thread or two because, yeah. man, they're enlightening. I'm, sick of it. I'm gonna, I'm I've definitely gonna check out cop humor. That sounds like fun. Hey, thanks for the call, Al. Right. I appreciate hearing from That's you tonight. Fine. Yeah, I just, I mean, it's always the same. Uh, I've read enough cop threads, and I've read enough cop opinions on comments on like cop block threads and things like that to where. I've seen enough. I really don't need to see For the most part, yeah. I mean, I was reading a little bit today. There was a couple of things I was reading. They're so um, hateful and so angry and so clearly, clearly of the us versus them mentality. Oh, clearly. It's, it's absolutely the, the, the mentality there is why don't these people just obey us? And it's like it's just the idea that we wouldn't just never even crosses their mind. So yeah, it's crazy. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. We have someone calling himself Modern Drummer calling from Wisconsin. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello there. Yeah, hey, uh, I wanted to talk about nootropics. I've been using them for about a year now. Okay. And for those who don't know, nootropics are brain supplements. They improve your memory, your cognition, your mood. And I've been happy with, uh, I've been taking paracetam with choline and duprazine, and I'm making the uh, leap to adrafinil, choline, and uh, I was going to ask Chris what he thought about that. Okay, so you've done some research into this, right, Chris? Yeah, Taylor? I'm. I'm. Uh, I am on aniracetam. Uh, You're alpha on it GPC. right now. Yeah, I'm presently on uh, alpha GPC, aniracetam, and Alcar. Uh, I the paracetam is the oldest and most well studied uh, nootropic. Are those all out manufactured there. chemicals versus like natural they, stuff? These are uh, the ones I'm referring to are uh, mm -hmm. manufactured chemicals. Okay. Hooperzine, I believe, is actually a natural extract. Uh, but I would I would caution you with the adrafinil. Adrafinil is uh, it the for anybody who's not familiar, it's it's it actually metabolizes into modafinil in your liver. Oh. so modafinil is, Which a, is a controlled. Uh, it's substance. a controlled substance in the United States. There's a company used to advertise on Free Talk Live, modup.net. That's maybe. right come back uh but the, the, you can't you can't legally have it in the united states without a prescription i think it's a schedule two controlled substance uh, uh, schedule four or something like that but i could be wrong about that whatever it is I, well, you need a prescription for it yeah, you can get it substance. with a prescription i don't know exactly how that pans out in any case um i would i would uh, urge you to use caution with a drafanil i tried a drafanil and uh i do you have do you have any like substance abuse issues you ever a problem with drugs or alcohol no, I do not. Okay, so I mean, it might work out a little bit better for you. I had a bit of a cocaine problem. Okay, it's a little too speedy for you, or something. It's or? a drafanil. It's a stimulant. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's basically you're you're basically using an amphetamine, right? It's a it's a it's a it's a it, met, it metabolizes into modafinil, and and meta, uh, blah, 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 modafinil is a is a but is stimulant. it legal? Is the adrafinil the adrafinil is legal? But mm -hmm. the thing is, so the problem though is that is when adrafinil is metabolizing into modafinil in your liver, it's really doing a number on your liver. So you're gonna Ooh, actually you're you're okay. doing you're doing some liver damage when you're taking it, and if you're is taking it on it? any sort of a regular basis, the other thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna build up a tolerance to it very quickly. Mm. So you can't like that's if, not good. If you every once in a while want to take some adrafinil before a test or a task or something like that, if you're good at using drugs responsibly, adrafinil can be good for that. Mm. Uh, and if you're if you're good at using drugs responsibly, that might be great for you. For me personally, I wanted to use it every day. It was speedy and stimulating, and I thought it was great. And then I kept upping the dose and upping the dose now, and upping the I dose. Thought that, hold on. I thought that some of the, the – well, the, I guess the idea behind these nootropics is that they're not speedy. They're not supposed to be stimulant-like, that they're supposed to – help you get things done but without the feel like you're on an amphetamine isn't that the kind of the pitch behind some that's of these things? the pitch behind like uh nupaptin and aracetam and all the racetams and a number of other ones the the when we're talking about um uh, adrafinil modafinil we're, we're talking about uh i'm going to pronounce it wrong like or or, Joe, or or Jeroics or something like that, where we're actually talking about a stimulant drug. Most of the things that are classified, a lot of people would not call adrafinil or modafinil or Adderall. Because I've heard of people who've taken modafinil who said it didn't feel like a, a stimulant, that they just you know felt more productive. Well, so maybe it just depends on your body chemistry or or whatever. No, I or mean were they just it's, lying? it's there. <laughs> 
I, I, I mean, it's it's very mild well, compared dose. to something like it's very mild compared to something like Adderall, but it's okay. it's stimulating your brain in the exact same way that amphetamines are, and that's why. I mean, like I've gotten like Adderalls and stuff like that, and taking Adderall is amazing. I could just sit there and write Woo! and research, and it's great. It really does make you more productive, but it's absolutely a euphoric. There's, there's got to be a price to pay, though, don't you think? There is, and and the price is that the tolerance goes up. Mm. That that at least in the case of um in the case of adrafinil, it's doing a number on your liver. I don't know if that's the same for uh, Adderall or Modafinil. Christopher Campbell is not a doctor. You should do your own research. Yes, this is not medical advice. <laughs> hey, my modern drummer, good luck. Thanks for the call tonight. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Not that you should believe doctors when they tell you stuff. <laughs> 855-450-3733. You can take control of the airwaves. Coming up here in moments, what's happening in Ferguson where people tried to take over the police headquarters. We'll tell you more about it. Actually, it was the St. Louis Metropolitan Cops. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. Our founders viewed the Constitution as the guiding law for determining whether or not acts taken by the government are legal. In a pure democracy, the majority can effectively do what it pleases, disregarding the rights of the minority. Our founders wrote the Constitution to put boundaries around government, to ensure that the government doesn't just make laws, it must obey the laws. When we say the rule of law, we mean that regardless of whatever political arguments we might have with others, we still protect their rights to life, liberty, and property. But to enforce those protections, there must be a branch of the government that won't respond to temporary political pressures. That's what the courts are for, to serve, as James Madison stated, as an impenetrable bulwark against every assumption of power in the legislative or executive branch. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Free Talk Live. I wouldn't snitch them out. I would report them to the police. Right. Okay, now. Call uh, what you want, uh, sir. Now, many states have laws about carrying firearms, even though their constitutions say that it's legal for everyone to own a firearm. Like and, New York and State. There's no way to ban it. Would you snitch out somebody that you knew had a firearm? If they had it illegally, I wouldn't snitch them out. I would report them. Right. I got to say you're a bad American, Ken. Yeah. I no, think you're a scumbag, would, Ken. You're a communist. You're I'm a not, communist. Look, I'm a communist because I want people to be able to carry guns like the Second Amendment says. He'd snitch on the person and then the cops would come and infringe it for him. Out there carrying guns at will? I'm a convicted felon. Do you think I shouldn't be able to pre protect my wife from a, a, an intruder? I, do, I don't think you should have a gun. How am I going to protect myself if the guy has a gun? There are many other ways to protect yourself than not having a gun. You should but call the cops, Mark, like any good citizen. That way the cops can come clean up my corpse after it's all over, right? Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. 
Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls here toll-free about whatever's on your mind. You just dial in at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. All the features are free, so enjoy those on us. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. If you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. And what that means is they encrypt your online data. So, therefore, because it's encrypted, your internet service provider, they'll have no idea what you're doing online with their internet connection. And that's useful because right now, if you don't have ProXPN, they're probably logging all the websites that you visit. And they could very well be keeping those logs for up to five years in some cases. And they're probably logging your search terms as well. So, you can stop that from happening by grabbing ProXPN. It's free. You just download their app from Windows or for Windows. Rather, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. It's free over at proxpn.com slash FTL. Just go grab the app and get it installed, and you are encrypted. Now, when you're ready, you can upgrade to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. With a premium account, which will cost you all of about five bucks a month, when you use their discount code, which is FTL50, and that saves you 50% off the price of the annual account. So you get that deep discount. FTL50 is the code, and it's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. By the way, it's available with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. So really, you have nothing to lose except your privacy. Go and get it at proxpn.com slash FTL. The code again is FTL50, which by the way, that savings is locked in for the lifetime of your account, no matter which account you choose at proxpn.com slash FTL. Our toll-free number here tonight is 855-453. It is the New Year's Eve edition of the program. Of course, lots to talk about in the news, including the protest uh, protesters storming St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. I had I seen a headline earlier thinking this was uh, in Ferguson. They went to St. Louis MPD headquarters this morning, and as a result, there were 25 arrests that were made, and other demonstrators were pepper sprayed. Protests planned to occupy the, or protesters planned to occupy the police department for four and a half hours until their demands were met one of which include amnesty for protesters charged with nonviolent offenses. The protesters also want officers Flannery and Hayes, responsible for recent shootings, to be fired immediately, among other grievances. In fact, they even had a notice letting the police know. I don't know if they link to it here in the Daily Mail article, but there was actually a paper notice that I guess they gave to the police putting them on notice that they uh, they were going to be taking back the police department, that the protesters were going to be taking over. Uh, Fox reports that at 10.30 in the morning, around 75 protesters marched downtown and then inundated uh, police headquarters. The pictures here on the Daily Mail story are pretty, pretty amazing stuff. They show uh, what is a clear crowd of people trying to come in. In fact, the Free Thought Project website had a short uh, click clip like a six second vine video which showed uh, this crowd trying to push their way into the police department and just a scattered amount of cops trying to stand against this thronging mass and that's what you see in these pictures here with the police doing all they can all they can do to stop this mass of protesters from coming into the department looking very very desperate looking very pathetic and very angry in what is uh, essentially a, an attempt to, to put a silence on free speech here apparently the police are not interested in serving and protecting uh, nor are they interested in listening to what these folks have to say you know they're not even pretending to care about what you think. Police say 15 protesters entered the lobby reading a list of demands. They asked for a meeting with Chief Sam Dotson, Mayor Francis Stay, or Board uh, Board of Alderman President Lou Reed. The mob posted mock eviction notices outside of the police building. The notice read, quote, We are informing you that the police department is scheduled to be reclaimed by its citizens today, December 31st, 2014. I actually saw a copy of this notice at the bottom. It signed, We the People. It's pretty cute. 
Police attempted to remove the protesters from the building and even used pepper spray on some. The police chief Sam Dotson, whom the uh, protesters uh, wished to, with whom the protesters wished to speak, said, "Quote: We are a public building. We're open, but we're open for legitimate business. We're not open for people to come in and." push their own agendas and disrupt the business that has to go on here. Chris Campbell, don't you love it when government describes what they do as business? Yeah, and it and it's funny too because I actually as I was I was writing about the the thing in New York City today and I and I went and I looked up like uh, job security, right? And there was a the job security of police departments is very specifically that they are not a business, right? That like <laughs> it it matters not what happens to the economy, whether or not people are happy with your services, uh, whether or not anybody actually wants you to do anything at all this is a racket it's not a yeah. business it's a we will take from you citizen and if you don't like it well then you could go straight to, to i think it's say hell right yeah right. yes, yeah. yes you can. <laughs> um, the s word the f word are generally no-nos and the four-letter c words okay as well. and and uh okay so yeah, yeah. so uh you could go straight there and uh, they don't they don't care about your happiness with their services, mm -hmm. and they certainly not like a business. For all this, but... we are going to reclaim the police department because we, in fact, own it. No, you do not own your police department. Your police department thinks they own you. So, no if doubt. you want to go in there and try to take it, guess what? There's a bunch of guys with guns in there, and I'm all for you doing it. But let's just not be surprised when they use force against you. Well, I think that what they did here was pretty neat. Like, I don't oppose it at all. I think that it's an interesting uh, way to protest. I think it's much more productive than going and setting buildings aflame. Yeah. Uh, so I like to see this kind of thing. In fact, it, it actually uh, hearkened me back, Chris Cantwell, to what happened here in our very own Keene, New Hampshire. Before your arrival, we had the 420 celebrations that happened here in town. And there were about 100 plus people in Central Square, the kind of the middle of downtown Keene, New Hampshire, smoking cannabis. Most many of them were not all 100 of them, but, you know, some people were just out there to support their friends who were smoking yeah. cannabis. Some of those videos were some of what inspired me to come here. Yeah. So um, th so you may be referring to the videos in which uh, the police made an arrest in Central Square. They tried targeting the people they thought were in charge. And then what happened after the arrest was. Keene's a small place. It doesn't take long to walk from Central Square all the way down to the police station. It's probably a mile and a half or something like that away. It's not very far. And so f uh, at least 50 of the people who were there in the park, so about half of the people in the park stayed in the park and continued to, you know, mm -hmm. having their celebration there. And then about half of the people took their signs and whatever else they had with them, and they walked down to the police station. It was Rich Paul, actually, who was arrested on that day. And uh, we went out back of the police station and sat in a circle that had at least 30 people in it. It was a fairly large, probably 30, 35 people at least in this circle sitting in the back. Now, if you look at the Keene Police Department, there's a, a back area where all the cops go to park their cars, their cruisers and such. And there's a sign that says no unauthorized access. And so everybody was behind that sign, which was a great symbolic photo, made right. for a great photo opportunity. <laughs> and so not only were we behind the no unauthorized access sign sitting right basically outside of the back door. So if they ever let somebody out of the department, they usually let them out the back door after they've been you know, put through the processing thing that they do. And so we sat out there for a, quite a while. I don't remember how long it was, you know, probably at least an hour smoking pot. And, uh, you know, actively, openly, obviously passing in joints around this circle. And then they let Rich Paul out and uh, Shane Maxfield, who's one of the police officers, came out and had a chat with folks. And he's actually against the war on drugs. And that was kind of interesting. But the next day was the day they arrested more people. They arrested a couple more. And then the protesters went inside the police department and proceeded to smoke pot <gasps> inside. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected 
hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. If you are struggling to pay or haven't been making your student loan payments, listen carefully to this urgent alert. Have you been out of school for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? Are your student loans past due or even in default? Can't go back to school because of an old student loan problem? Fast Track Student Loans can get your student loans out of default, stop any wage garnishments, stop collection calls, and stop seizure of your tax refund. Give yourself a break. Stop the stress and get your student loan payments down to as little as $25 a month based on what you can afford to pay. One quick 10-minute call could help you solve your student loan problems. So call right now. Not available in all states. Payments may vary based on income. 800-215-6813, Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up whatever you'd like. The toll free number here is 855 450 free. That is 855 450 3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype username here is lrn.fm. We're talking about the uh, the protesters. Now, the media is using the term storm. Protesters storm the police department. Sounds like, you know, they're trying to burn the place down. Or yeah, I think they something. stormed the Little Caesars a few weeks ago. This just sounds like they're sort of at the door and being like, hey, we want accountability. Yeah, that's what they want. Um, they want to talk, they in this case wanted to talk to the police chief or uh, talk to the person who is in charge of the board of aldermen, which is kind of like the city councilors, basically, uh, or the mayor. They were willing to talk to any of those folks. They wanted. They had a list of uh, things they wanted, a list of demands. They had a notice informing the police that they were being uh, taken over, essentially, by the protesters. 
And uh, the, presumably the chief did not come out to talk to them, but he did speak to the media saying that they're open for legitimate business, which I find a laughable claim because I've always been bothered by this, Chris Cantwell, where government, usually it's the courts that use the term the most often. It's usually where I hear it a lot. Business customer, as they called you at the DMV case. Do you have business with the court? If you don't have business with the court, you shouldn't be here, that kind of thing. And uh, that's what they're basically were saying here is that, you know, we don't want to talk. We don't want you to be here because you're pushing your own agenda and you're disrupting the business that go, that has to go on there. Well, there's no business that goes on inside a police department because none of it's voluntary. Uh, it's not based on anything that is consensual. The police, as you pointed out previously, Chris, are being funded through taxes. They're being funded through the threat of violence. And so, therefore, you can't call that business in the same way you can't call the mafia threatening a business owner you know, with protection services. But, of business. course, the mafia does call their extortion rackets business, right? And like, I'm in the protection yeah. business. I'm in the garbage business. I'm in the book. It's know. the same thing here. Yeah. It's that I'm kind of business. I'm in the business of robbing trucks. <laughs> I mean, that's the same it's the same nonsense. Protesters were tiffed by the police's use of pre- uh, pepper spray, claiming things escalated too quickly. <laughs> tiffed about getting maced. <laughs> In neighboring it's... Ferguson, police officers were shot at Tuesday night as they tried to investigate a burglary call at one of the town's many buildings burned down at anti-cop riots. Officers were called to the shell of the old Beauty Town store on West Florissant Avenue on Tuesday around 6 p.m. and found several suspects stealing hair products from the building's basement. When trying to arrest the suspects, officers heard gunfire coming from the Park Ridge apartments located behind the store. I don't know what that has to do with the protest in uh, St. Louis. But nonetheless, people are upset. Uh, They showed up about 100 folks today in St. Louis at the Metropolitan Police Department. 25 arrests. And all they wanted to do was talk. Well, I uh, I'm glad to see them at least going after the the actual target of the uh, the outrage. I, I I don't I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for the Ferguson thing because I don't think Michael Brown was a particularly good guy. Yeah, he's not uh, a sympathetic character. But uh, and and I don't like the the race pimping and stuff like that. But you know, if the police are the target of your rage, uh, you know, go to the police department, stop burning down restaurants, and uh, take it to the police because they are the source of your problems, folks. I was trying to find the actual eviction notice here, and I don't remember where it was. You said they had a list of demands. Is the, are the demands up there somewhere? That's now? what I was trying to pull up, and I'm going to see if I can. Uh, you know what? I think it was actually in. Oh, yep, here it is. Okay, so the Free Thought Project has it. Uh, eviction notice. This is what they posted up around the police department when they went there today. Uh, and it says to Chief Sam Dotson and all other occupiers of the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department from citizens of St. Louis. We are informing you that the police department is scheduled to be reclaimed by its citizens today, December 31st, 2014. You are hereby scheduled to be removed from power for the following reasons. Point. Perpetrating police brutality on our citizenry. Transforming the police force into a militarized occupying force. Being complicit in mass incarceration of black and brown citizens. Well, what about the other people? They incarcerate all kinds of people. You need to lock up more white people. How about we just let everybody go who's peaceful? Going on here, failing to terminate police officers who violate civil rights, including the most important right, the right to life. Failing to be transparent in police-involved shootings. Failing to train officers in cultural diversity and hiring a police department that is reflective of the community. Failing to train officers on de-escalation of citizens in mental crisis. Failing to create a whistleblower program that protects officers who want to report corruption. And finally, imposing blight on our communities under the guise of protecting and serving, signed, we the people. Now, whether or not you agree with all of the points on that uh, little bulletin, it's nonetheless an interesting development. And they, and they don't sound like demands per se. They are reasons that they are. They That's are, true. They are grievances as opposed to demands. It doesn't sound like they're like, hey, go do this and then, or else. And then everything yeah. will be fine. It says we are removing you from power for these reasons. And Unfortunately, they did not success you remove the police from power. Today. Well, of course they didn't. And the fact of the matter is they probably don't want to, right? I mean, these I imagine that look from from my uh looking at what's going on down there in Ferguson, this is largely not a, a, a rational thing, right? I mean, this is this is left-wingers, this is race baiters. There was a video of some uh some voluntarists uh, with signs down there. That, oh, really? Yeah, uh, and and people were hostile towards them. They were mm-hmm. like, "Get out of here with your voluntarism." 
Wow. And what were some of the signs? Do you recall any? Google the non-aggression principle, uh, okay. uh, Google voluntarism, and and people were like, well, this is an organized event. We have handed out signs. You are distracting from our message. Wow. Yeah. Total control. Exactly. And so this is, you know, these people don't have any opposition to government power. They're just basically, uh, you know, stirring the pot for the most part, it seems. Well, nonetheless, uh, I can't say there's anything about you know what they did today that I disagree. Yeah, no, with I'm glad I'm glad they did it, and I and I hope that you know they sort of see, you know, th look, there's a lot of different ways to expose the violence inherent in the system, and so you know if a bunch of people are under the impression that they own the police department, and then they go down there and try to reclaim it, and Surprise. they get maced and threatened with violence and thrown yeah. in jail, then you know, hey, maybe uh, maybe it's time to think about uh, this this concept of the state that you've probably been fond of for your entire life. The people who are out gunning down your people in the street and locking you up for possessing plants and throwing right. grenades at your babies might not be your friends. Yeah, now they're arresting you for just trying to come have a conversation. I mean, that's ultimately what they were trying to do today. They came in mass because had five I mean, people no, no, walked no. in. Let's, oh, hang on a second. You can't tell me that they just wanted to have a conversation and evict the police from the police department. Those are two contradictions of terms. Well, good point. Okay, so they did post the eviction notices. But at the same time, some of the people there were saying they wanted to talk to the police. Chief. And the other thing, too, is like, let's rem remember what an eviction notice is. An eviction notice is we will force you out of a place. That's right? true. It's the, backed by the force of the police, typically. Yeah. If I if I live in an apartment and I stop paying my rent and he goes to the court and he gets an eviction notice, that means that at some point the county sheriff's going to come in there with his guns That's and right. remove me from the premises. So they are threatening you know, to use violence against the police when mm. they make a statement like that. And I'm all for them doing it. It does I'm have a clenched fist. It has a clenched fist in the background of the uh, the piece of paper. A black one, probably, right? Well, I mean, it's against a white background, so yeah, you wouldn't be able yeah, to no. see something else. Uh, so you're welcome to share your thoughts here with us. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I think that, you know, good for them for getting out there and, and doing this. I think it's important stuff. And, uh, you know, it's interesting how the St. Louis police responded compared to what happened here in Keene. In Keene, when activists went into the police department, I would say a couple dozen people went into the police department here. When they went in and they smoked pot openly in the police department lobby, which in the Keene police department, there's three windows. There's the door to get in, and then there's three windows. So the each side of the room, one side's a window, another side's a window, another side's the window, the other side's the door. So wherever you're standing in the Keene police department lobby, you're being watched. There's somebody there. Yeah, I've been in there. It's there's cameras in there. You know, it's not like the police are going to say they didn't know what was going on in the, <laughs> in the lobby. And so they they just ignored us. Uh, now, I, I can't say us because I wasn't there that day. I actually had to leave town on the day they went inside. But I was out back the day prior when we smoked up in the circle right outside the back of the department. Again, obviously on their surveillance cameras and whatever. But I was just uh, so proud of that. I thought it was an amazing moment because it really showed how a large number of people can take an action and have an effect. And whatever the police do, it looks bad for them. Right? right, so when the police do nothing, it looks bad because they're not enforcing their they law. They look impotent. Right, and then uh, and in the case of St. Louis here, well, they did crack down and they've arrested 25 people, and that doesn't look good either for the police. So they're really in a no-win situation here. The only way they can ever win hearts and minds over again is to stop enforcing bad laws, I think, and they have no intention of doing that anytime soon. It's Free Talk Live. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. 
the knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 you can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You dial in toll-free to bring up anything you want right here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. If you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, then please make a New Year's resolution of becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier you for welfare queen. $5 per month. Uh, it's funny. We talked about the, the whole libertarian welfare queen uh, thing. Did you know that blog got taken offline? Chris Cantwell? What? Yeah, the blog about the uh, the libertarian welfare queens thing. At least the other day, like yesterday, the whole site was down. Well, well yeah. I won't miss it. Anyway, it was uh, it was an interesting discussion. I think that it was obviously you know the claim that you are a libertarian welfare queen, which was one of the claims that article was making, was ridiculous. I mean, that's it was very. Um, I forget the word that I used. Incendiary, I would say, in the way that it was written, and it was wasn't uh, clickbait. That's a good term, yeah, to get people to click on it. Um, I thought that you know she had some valid critiques of some of the people in her article, but of the three people that she picked on, I think that you were probably the least of you know the. I think it uh, would you know uh, the least I think able to be critiqued. I think it's very telling that she didn't go after Antonio Bueller. Uh, Antonio Bueller had a case. Does he where- even claim to be a libertarian though? Um, I don't think he does. He he basically gave up claim to that because of me, I think. <laughs> I think I shut down his claim to libertarianism. Uh, now he just calls libertarians racist. Um, well, you don't have to be 
a libertarian to understand that the police are out of control, right? Which is why right. cop block is so popular. Right, exactly. I mean, cop block, the people who support cop block aren't necessarily libertarians. No, a lot In of fact, them are anything but. Yeah, it would be interesting to see a breakdown of the percentages of people as far as, you know, what are their political beliefs if they support cop block. Right. Um, but, you know, you, uh, Chris, you ask for donations at ChristopherCantwell.com, and so that's because you want your career to be activism and, you know, writing articles online. And right. there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with uh, the idea of sustaining yourself from doing work that people value and i provide a product that is so good that people pay me for it and they don't even have to there you go that's a good point yeah they <laughs> certainly don't have to same thing here at free talk live i mean we've been taking uh, free talk live amp dollars for a number of years i think we started that program back in 2005 so it's actually the 10th it's probably close to the 10th anniversary of the Free Talk Live AMP program, and it's because of the donations of, of listeners like you is why we're on 160 radio stations. We just added another station in Delaware. We'll be announcing that on Saturday night. So, awesome. Yeah, if you're on our email list or watch our Facebook page, uh, then you saw the announcement earlier today, but we'll officially welcome them on Saturday because they're taking our Saturday show. But uh, it's the it's listeners like you that make this possible for five bucks a month. And that's one of the nice things about the Internet is we can go directly to our listeners or, in your case, your readers over at ChristopherCantwell.com. You can go directly to them. You don't have to stop in the middle with the advertising model. And uh, advertising can be hard to get if you've got a, a controversial viewpoint. And certainly, Chris Cantwell, you are a controversial person. People love to hate you. Uh, they love to talk about the things that you're saying, and that's good for you because it means more clicks and, yeah. you know, and more. I interest. think it's good for everybody because it's spreading a lot of ideas, and uh, you know, and so. But yeah, I mean, if you get into if you have a situation where you're relying on uh, you know advertisers or any sort of corporate sponsorship, I mean, it's going to affect the outcome of the content, and that's uh, it certainly could. I mean, we've had a situation, Chris, where uh, we actually got dropped from a, a, there were some radio stations in Jackson, Tennessee, that were airing the show. We said something critical of the military, which commonly happens here on free talk live and they pulled us off the air because they got some complaint right. from one of their advertisers and one of their listeners it didn't take much for them to decide well they're done for and you know i'm not going to pander to it i you know i'm not going to change my viewpoint because what some radio stations say if, if we lost 10 stations tomorrow because of something that we said on the air i'm not going to change my viewpoint you know? Right, and that's and that's it, and it's important to maintain one's integrity. And one of the ways to do that is to just have people who support the content support directly, the content directly. And the, and the yeah. real libertarian welfare queens are the ones who are out there reading this stuff and not donating mm. because they are now consuming the content at the expense of someone else. <sighs> It's hard to really say. I mean, again, the term libertarian welfare queen, as defined by. I know. By, I just used it. I used yeah. the term just as badly as she did. Right. Just okay. Now. So, just to be fair, right. So, like, as defined by M.K. Lords, who called in the other night uh, to kind of talk about things, but as defined by her, it wasn't really using the term welfare in its proper usage. And therefore, you also did not use it in its proper usage. But what you are saying is that the people who are free riders, you know, they're benefiting off of. You, you write an article at ChristopherCampbell.com, everyone gets to read it. Uh, uh, but only 1% of the people who read it will actually pay for it. Now, I don't get upset about that, and I don't think you're upset about it either. No. Um, that doesn't bother me at all. It used to bother Mark. I don't know if it still does, and he just doesn't complain about it anymore because I basically asked him to cut it out um, because that's our model. That's our business model. We give our product away. And the reason why we give it away, and I think you touched on this in one of your articles at ChristopherCampbell.com, is that that helps it spread. And this is not about, you know, Free Talk Live is not a show about making money as much as it is a show about, you know, the ideas of freedom and, you know, your opportunity to call in and talk about anything that you want to, give people that chance on talk radio. And if we're doing something valuable, if you're putting something out there into the world that people appreciate, some of those people are going to put, uh, you know, they're going to put cash up to support that because they don't want you to go away. They don't want you to go and get a job. They don't want that content to disappear from their news feed or from their podcast aggregator or whatever. And they realize that somebody has to step up to support it. But I don't get upset when somebody can't or they feel like, you know, they don't listen enough or that we're not, you know, valuable enough or they don't have enough money or whatever. I don't, you know, to me, the reasons don't matter. I expect 
we're probably going to get 1% of the listeners, you know, contributing. And if we get more than 1%, then that's great. If we get 5 or 10%, then that's awesome. Um, but, I think I think 1% would be huge. I mean, yeah, you know, that's think, what I'm saying. Yeah. 1%, I'd be pretty happy with, with 1%. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't have any expectations, and I don't get my butt hurt over somebody sending me $2. Apparently, uh, that's <laughs> one of the things that Stefan Molyneux had done in the past, was getting upset because he has to pay more taxes because somebody it sent him a $2 It wasn't taxes. It was actually, like, if, if you followed up, I, and I would I listened to you guys talk about that, and I, I know I've after, after we go through this clip, I might just have to stop standing up for Stefan Molyneux because he actually did did something really bad in this one i think another something but that's really bad this the particular incident and complaining about the donation it was like somebody sent him like a dollar through paypal right mm. and and he explained in a video later on that like if you if you're going to send him money through paypal just like wait a few episodes right because mm. paypal is going to take 30 cents plus 2.9 percent of the tracks yep, transaction that's true. so you're basically giving paypal 33 percent of the money that you just sent. i had heard he turned his nose up at two dollars is what I heard. All right, so two dollars then. But and, okay, so then it's- and and here was the funny thing, Chris Cantwell, was that uh, Stefan Molyneux had said something like, "Well, if you like the show, you can donate five cents a show." Now I, I'm paraphrasing. I believe it. He said. I think something he says like fifty that. cents per episode is what he said. I thought it was less. I thought it was less than that because you know then I guess the person who was donating was like, "Well, yeah, I listened to this many shows, and that's you know what I wanted to donate for it." And and, and from what I heard, his was Stefan's excuse was, and Stefan Molyneux is a uh, libertarian podcast guy. He makes videos online, relatively popular. And his excuse was that he had to do more tax work. Like, I guess he has to itemize everything or something. I don't know. I don't do taxes. So I don't know what you have to do when you get PayPal donations or cash donations with taxes because I don't deal with that crap. And just because he does, he's going to use that as his excuse to turn his nose up at one of his supporters who wanted to give him some money. It just... It seems real I, I never, I never heard the tax thing. He made That's, a video was saying it was about the it was about the PayPal fees, and it was something to like you know look. He, I guess his assumption is that you're listening to him every day, which is not the case for everybody, right? Yeah. I mean, I listen to Molyneux on a pretty regular basis. I I catch more of it from YouTube, but every once in a while I'll download a podcast. How did you find this new clip? Because there's a new offensive clip that just came out yesterday. This was all over Facebook today. That people were basically it was it it went uh, pretty big on Reddit. Somebody had roast, uh, posted, Stefan Molyneux goes full potato and okay and basically the claim here is that uh in the case of eric garner he's saying that eric garner is the not a choked uh, to death victim over cigarettes. yeah the guy who's uh, strangled to death on the streets of staten island for selling untaxed cigarettes he's saying that this is not a victimless crime to sell cigarettes to people who want to buy them and uh i found this extraordinarily screwed up because pretty clearly Hey, you know, avoiding taxes is, I think, a, a, I think it's as, heroic. as libertarian as it gets. Uh, hold that thought, Chris, because we'll, we'll continue it here in the third hour. We've actually got the clip from the video, which, by the way, some people have been saying, well, some of the critical Stefan, some of the clips that are out there cr- critical of Stefan Molyneux have been taken out of context. This one is fully within his show. It wasn't clipped out by somebody else on put on some other YouTube channel. This was this is actually directly from his own YouTube channel from his show, unedited. Absolutely. So. Uh, uh, well, besides the editing, that we're not going to play the full two editing hours. for time, right. but yeah. yeah. So we'll uh, we'll play that here in a moment. Your calls and thoughts are welcome. Eight fifty five four fifty free, and you can tell us if you think that selling Lucy's loose cigarettes singles is uh, is a crime with a victim, because apparently that's what Stefan Molyneux was saying on his program. We'll give you the details here in moments. And as I mentioned previously, if you want to get behind Free Talk Live, I don't know if I ever got the URL for the AMP program. We sort of went off into a a tangent of talking about supporting shows and such. You can support us by going to become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com for $5 per month with any major credit card through PayPal. And you can use Visa or MasterCard right there on our website. So drop by amp.freetalklive.com. And if you can't do it tonight, make that your New Year's resolution. It sure does help us out. Hour number three is coming up. It's Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. 
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, December 31st, 2014. Silver is trading at $16 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,196 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $315. Antiwar.com reports a UN Security Council resolution on Palestinian statehood by 2017 has failed with eight votes in favor, one short of the nine needed for passage. Even then, the vote wasn't going through as the U.S. vetoed it. The U.S. has promised the veto and reportedly threatened to sanction the Palestinians for even presenting the doomed bill, which called for Israel to end the occupation by 2017. Israeli Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman termed the resolution an act of aggression, and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu lobbied heavily for the U.S. to veto against it. Still unclear is the fate of an alternative version proposed by the French government, which is significantly watered down and only calls for the resumption of peace talks in the next two years. Israel is pushing for a veto of that, but the U.S. hasn't yet made its intentions clear. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. The Associated Press reports the chief political foe of Russian President Vladimir Putin was convicted along with his brother on Tuesday in a fraud case widely seen as a vendetta by the Kremlin, triggering one of Russia's boldest anti-government demonstrations in years. Police allowed a few thousand protesters to gather just outside Red Square for about two hours, a show of relative restraint for Russian authorities who have little tolerance for dissent, before moving in to break up the unsanctioned rally by pushing the demonstrators towards some subway entrances. The rally came hours after anti-corruption campaigner Alexei Navalny was found guilty of what activists said were trumped up charges and given a suspended sentence of three and a half years. His younger brother was sent to prison, a move that drew comparisons to the Stalin-era practice of punishing family members of enemies of the state. Navalny rose to prominence with his investigations of official corruption and played a leading role in organizing anti-Putin demonstrations in Moscow in 2011 and 2012 that drew hundreds of thousands. Navalny, who has been under house arrest since February, violated its terms to attend the rally and was rounded up by police as he approached the site. He later tweeted that police drove him home and blocked him from leaving his apartment. The protesters who gathered on the Manaz Square outside the Kremlin chanted, We are the power and Russia without Putin. Scuffles erupted between the protesters and pro-Putin activists shouting, Those who don't like Russia should go to the United States. The chants reflected 
described the Kremlin's depiction of opposition supporters as Western Stooges. Police said they detained about 100 protesters, while activists claimed up to 250 were rounded up. Russian law requires demonstrators to get official clearances for rallies. Violators can face prison sentences and heavy fines. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports officials confirm bodies and debris from Air Asia Indonesia flight QZ8051 were spotted off the island of Borneo on Tuesday. The body of a woman was recovered, but search and rescue workers failed to recover a second body due to large waves. The shadow of what looked like a plane and an emergency exit door appeared to be discovered in the nearly 100,000 square mile search zone. Family members cried and some fainted as they watched a live news conference that showed debris from the plane and what appeared to be a body. Air Asia flight QZ8051 was flying to Singapore when it disappeared on Sunday after the pilots requested a flight plan change due to bad weather. The plane was carrying 162 people, mostly from Indonesia. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. After this morning's police raid on Cosmopolitan Magazine's male pleasure laboratory revealed that test subjects were forced to endure horrific abuses and inhumane living conditions, Onion reporters spoke to 23-year-old Daniel Chertok, one of the numerous men exploited for the monthly magazine's studies on erotic stimulation. It was awful. It drove us wild for days on end. Once they made me lather myself with gallons of sexy bath oils and then read thousands of racy text messages until my eyesight began to blur. Then for the next 12 hours, they blasted sultry songs into my ears and made me simulate 50 crazy hot sex moves. They said I couldn't rest until they found the bliss button on my Randy regions. According to Chair Talk, test subjects were often subjected to hours of grueling experimentation at the hands of female scientists. Chair Talk added that many of his fellow subjects were not lucky enough to survive the excruciating treatment. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It is the live New Year's Eve edition of the program. Joining you tonight, it's Ian. And Cantwell. And you can join us also via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So we will go into your calls and thoughts. But coming up, we've got audio from Stefan Molyneux. Now, some would argue he has jumped the shark already a while back with, uh, oh, I don't know, filing a DMCA takedown notice on a critical YouTube channel that he didn't like. Uh, actually, technically, it was his manager that did it, but when confronted about it, Stefan Molyneux did not try to take it back. He didn't apologize. He endorsed it fully. Yeah, and, he did. And I, uh, and, I, and, I, and I wrote about that, and I said, hey, he's wrong. He's got to make restitution. And he, he did not. Uh, you know, but... I don't like that this was used as an excuse to discredit everything Stefan Molyneux has said. And that's, oh, that's ridiculous. Stefan Molyneux's fault who said, is because— Who has done that? I mean, who has used that to discredit everything he said? I think a lot of people have said about Stefan Molyneux he's done a lot of great work and that, you know, there's a, a catalog of some really great videos that the guys come out with There's a lot time. of really jealous libertarians out there. No doubt about that. I mean, I'll certainly give you that. And, and, the, and it's also true that when you're in the spotlight, people are going to nitpick and pick apart everything that you say. Right. But when you make a mistake, you try to make it right, right? Like, so if you if I blather something here on the air that I didn't really mean to say, but I said it uh, because, you know, when you're doing live radio, sometimes things just come out that you didn't mean to say the way you said or whatever. You issue a correction. You know, you, yeah, you issue a correction. You eat a little crow. You say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Here's what I meant. Or, you know, I've changed my mind. I, I was, you know, I wasn't thinking clearly or whatever. You know, say something when it's brought to your attention that you've gone against your principles. And there's a shocking clip coming up here we're going to play for you. Stefan Molyneux, of course, for those that don't know, is a relatively uh, well-known libertarian philosopher type guy. Let's go to Kyle first in Connecticut, though. Kyle, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Chris Cantwell. Oh, hi. Thank you very much for having my hey. call. Hey, Kyle. It's our job. Go ahead. 
Uh, I guess my question is kind of off the cusp, but I've been talking with a lot of people about libertarian ideas, and I keep coming up with this this um, response where, you know, the, someone doesn't believe in free will, and thus they don't believe in praxeology, or anyone can even uh, involve themselves in purposeful action. It's called, like, uh, pessimistic incompatibilism. I'm just wondering if you guys have heard about this, or... Even what do you think, if there is or is not a free will, does that automatically disqualify uh, anarchism, I guess, in any way? I don't know the term that you're referring to, pessimistic incompatibilism. I've never heard of that before. Uh, I, I, I don't know a whole lot of people who say that you have, like, no free will, right? I mean, I think most they people exist. believe in free will, but they also believe that the government should control you through force, right? That I like Rich Paul's answer to the free will question, and that is that he believes in free will, and if there is no free will, then he had to, you know, because <laughs> 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 he had no choice, I guess is what he was saying. Um, so what are you? your question is, Kyle— what about the people who don't believe in free will? I'm not, I guess I'm not really clear on what you're asking. I'm guess, sorry. Uh, neither am I. I mean, it, it's it's really fresh term for me too. That's why I wanted to call in and see if you guys had heard of it. But it's, it's just hard to spread the ideas. It I doesn't. Mean, it doesn't that. sound worthy of taking seriously. People who have the notion that you just have no free will at Isn't all. Isn't that just, determinism or whatever? That what, what there's that like is. a predetermined girl following God's plan or something? I no, mean, you don't even necessarily have to be a uh, believer in God to believe in determinism, from what I understand. The idea of determinism is that you can't choose anything but what you choose because, you know, you've been pre, uh, not pre-selected or predest predestined, but based on based the things on that have happened. He just hung up. Sorry, but I don't know what happened there, Kyle. You're welcome to call back if you had more to say. Um but anyway, uh, the idea being that, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not an expert on determinism here, okay? This is just right. my rudimentary understanding of it. The idea being that, well, all of these things have happened up until this point to get you to this point, you know, whatever those things are. And so, therefore, you can't make any other choice besides the choice you make. I actually I actually think I had a similar discussion with uh, my roommate, Rapture, the other day. Okay. Uh, that he he said, well, you know, and, and we're making a, an argument about are people, like, good or bad, really? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, his his position was basically well the circumstances that led you to this position that you're in influenced the choice that you made and therefore you didn't actually really make the choice the, the choice was sort of made for you by all these different circumstances it and seems like, very disempowering doesn't it's, it? it does and it also it, it removes all like moral obligation from a person and it's mm -hmm. very popular with like nihilists right sure. they're saying i couldn't that, help but kill that man yeah i just had no option but to rape that woman or you know it was the circumstances yeah. of my upbringing and i'm like no you make millions and millions of choices over the course of right. your life, and all of those choices led up to the moment that puts you right in that spot, and you're responsible for all of them. And there were choices that were made outside of your control, no question about it. You were put in circumstances where your choices were certainly limited. Sure. But uh, you had a number of choices to make every single time. Yeah. And every single time you made that choice. It seems pretty clear to me. I have heard about this determinism stuff, though, from people within the liberty movement. So I would say to Kyle about his question is this is not uncommon even within the liberty movement to have this discussion with people. I don't know how popular it is, but it's common enough to where I've come across it more than, you know, more than a few times. Yeah, I I'll, I'll get into, you know, nihilism versus is there such a thing as morality versus morality is subjective or objective or whatever, but I Devin, I I very rarely find that somebody just acts as if we have no choice in the matter. That doesn't I I don't find that too frequently, but I've had it a couple times. So, you can share your thoughts on that issue if you'd like because I, I like the idea of free will i mean it seems seems like we have free will it's certainly the uh, a very crystal clear illusion that we have free will if there is no free will it's a darn convincing illusion that we do have it, it right? certainly because, is like you're trying to decide right now whether or not you're going to drink tonight yeah, I mean, I, I'm making choices all of the time. I yeah. would love to just take that burden off my shoulders and be like, well, <laughs> it's not really up to me now, is it? I can just go and, you know. I'm uh, a victim of circumstance. Yeah, I'll just go have unprotected sex with strangers and do drugs yeah. and not pay my bills and just say right. that, hey, this is all not my fault. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it sounds like uh, the people who are saying those things are making excuses for bad choices or something like that almost. Exactly. Like, it, it's it's... I, I, I don't have a whole lot of uh, sympathy for that. I, if somebody wants to call up, discuss it with me intelligently and is you know well informed of the position, I think it would be an interesting debate, though. All right. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. So we're going to play the audio. This is from apparently the 
most recent episode of Stefan Molyneux's show, which is called Free Domain Radio. And uh, let's just jump right into it, and we'll comment as necessary as we go throughout it here. And he's just there selling cigarettes. In other words, there's no victim from him, uh, but he's going to get you know tackled, and then just like with any other law, you can be thrown in a cage or killed if you resist. Well, but but hang on a sec, hang on a sec. So, no victim. For uh, no, for him selling uh, cigarettes. Absolutely, there is. Uh, okay, uh, well, I've, I've missed that one. Which, what would you say? Who's the victim? Well, it's there? it's the victim is the people who are obeying the law. Ooh. So, Whoa. Okay. so, and there's more. Yeah, <laughs> there's more. We'll get into it. But that's a shocker, and you can tell even his listener is shocked by what he's saying, and he'll ask for clarification here. Well, what do you mean? I mean, why are so, Because this guy, Stefan Molyneux, is, seems like one of the most anti-state guys. He's got a video out that was an excellent video called The Sunset of the State. You know, this guy is no fan of the state. He's constantly critiquing the state, but yet to say that by selling loose cigarettes, you're somehow victimizing the people who are obeying the laws? Yeah, it's it's one of these uh it, it is it is shocking to me because of according to Stefan Molyneux, taxation is theft. You know, the mm-hmm. taxation itself is the crime. Taxation is the thing that's creating the victim. And apparently the guy who just tries to not be a victim is somehow victimizing all the other victims. And that's right. sort of like, uh, that's uh, crazy. you know, that's, I, that's I could just imagine. That's slave violence all the way. Uh, exactly. It's, we're, we're, uh, we're all in the, the uh, you know, the slave dungeon and, uh, and Jamal was thinking about escaping. And they're like, don't escape because Master will whoop us. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's crazy talk. This is so, so shocking because this is... Stefan Molyneux is the person who, one of the people who really popularized the idea that everybody's on a big plantation. He's got another video about that where he talks about how countries are plantations or, you know, sort of plantations writ large, uh, essentially. And yet here he is engaging in that slave on slave violence where somebody gets mad, some like some business owner gets mad because somebody is doing business without permission. Somebody has had the courage to go out there and take personal risk. And do business without asking a state government bureaucrat for permission first. To me, that person's a hero. They deserve a pat on the back and a thank you for doing that rather than jumping through all yeah, the hoops. Not to have the wind squeezed out of their lungs. Yeah. So we'll continue here. There's another. It's a, I took about a three minute long clip. Stefan gets more detailed on what he means by this crime supposedly has a victim. More coming up on Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of 
where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, you've got Ian. And Cantwell. And we invite you to join Free Talk Live in Austin, Texas, March 28th and 29th. That's coming up fast. It's going to be the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference happening at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, March 28th and 29th. Speakers, exhibitions, a great opportunity to do some networking, as well as hosting the second million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. It's the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. They'll highlight what Bitcoin means to everyone, as well as concentrate on where the technology can go beyond just being a currency. If you want a glimpse into the future, you'll want to be in Austin, Texas, March 28th and 29th. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com. Get your tickets there, and if you use code FTL, you'll save $25 off the already fairly low admission price of $150. So knock $25 bucks off if you use code FTL. And if you use code FTL, then another $25 of that to- uh, total will go toward Sean's Outpost, which is a great Bitcoin-based charity operating out of Florida helping homeless people. So you're getting a great price for an amazing event, and we'll look forward to seeing you there because Free Talk Live was there broadcasting live last year, and we'll be there again this year, March 28th, 29th, the Moody Theater in downtown Austin. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com and grab your tickets there. Again, that's TexasBitcoinConference.com, and don't forget code F. TL as we continue here with uh, I'm going to just play through the clip of Stefan Molyneux and then we'll get to folks who have some comments here yeah. or, uh, so they have some unrelated comments which is fine you can call in about anything you want but I do want to get through this clip so so far in the clip it's Stefan talking to a caller about the Eric Garner situation the man who was choked basically to death by a New York City cop for selling loose cigarettes and Stefan Molyneux has made the statement, the claim that what Eric Garner did selling loose cigarettes was a crime with a victim because some people have paid the state for the privilege to sell cigarettes. And so how dare this man sell his own cigarettes without asking permission, without paying the state tax, et cetera, et cetera. What an evil man. So uh, it's pretty shocking. We'll continue the clip here now. That's interesting. I- I'm surprised that you make that that. Uh that you're, you make that connection there, stuff. Just because, for me, like, because they uh, they are victimized by the state, by like you know, like a, I guess like vendor licensing laws there. And well, no, no, no. I'm, there is that obviously. And there's property taxes, and there's the expense of having Garner, to have a but shop. Garner but no, but, but imposing, no, imposing no, that on him. No, but it's um, uh, it's the cigarette taxes, right? Well, that's and a, the fact so that's, that that's cigarettes one, that sure. yeah, but so there's cigarette taxes, and and as far as I understand it. I'm pretty sure about this. 
that Sestorians are not allowed to sell single cigarettes. So and so so he's able to. Um, but that wouldn't be. But they wouldn't be the victim of him because he's selling cigarettes loosely. It's just that he's playing outside the rules. Um, the victimization is from the state to the the store owners. Now there, the caller is spot yeah. on here. I mean, the caller is you know everything the caller is saying is right on. And like, I imagine that the caller is a regular Molyneux listener, by yeah. the way, too. Okay, because these are arguments that you would have heard from Stefan Molyneux in in previous things. And You'd I think, at and least. I well, I brought you know uh, we'll see if we get to it, but I brought in a clip of him talking about the Clive and Bundy situation where he took a much different tone. You know, and it's not the the idea that you are somehow uh, screwed over your fellow taxpayer by not paying your taxes. This is a new one for for Stefan Molyneux, to my knowledge. Uh, I I I saw him when he when he came out with his first video about the Eric Garner situation. He, uh, he somebody brought it to my attention, thinking that he was like pro cop, and I said, well. You know, I, I didn't think that it was pro-cop, but I, I didn't like the idea that when an officer gives you an order, you have to obey it. But that what he said? Yeah, and I, I wrote an article that said, you know, that this is ridiculous, that, you know, people disobey police and come out with good outcomes. Uh, Damo Freeman is one. Pete Ayer was another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carla Garrick, as much as I hate to give her any credit. There's a lot of people who have disobeyed bad laws, yourself, of course, sure. uh, who have uh, done a lot of uh, good by disobeying the state. And the idea that you have to obey an officer is patently ridiculous. Well, and- I've never, I've never really much cared for Stefan Molyneux's uh, game plan, right? Like, so his game plan is just obey and do whatever. It's always been this, from yeah. what I understand. Yeah, is just obey, and then we'll outgrow the state by having sex and having children and raising kids, which right. I'm all for. Like, yeah, let's have sex and raise children and stop beating the crap out of them yeah that's that's fine i mean there's nothing wrong with that idea but the you know the idea that you're somehow going to out f the status is right. pretty ridiculous no, status are breeding pretty frequently yeah and so um you know that's one of the reasons why he initially opposed the the free state project because he just wants this he had this multi-generational approach to things i'm like that's not gonna work and i think he warmed up to the free state project over time but you know nonetheless uh let's continue here with the comments the store owners there wouldn't you say yeah yeah i get that but they but they can't do anything about that stop. right stop, i mean stop. they can't yeah, yeah. do so, anything okay, but they can't do they can't do anything about the taxes. The store well, owners. Yeah, the store owners can't do anything about the taxes. Well, guess what? Eric Garner did do something about the taxes. He's saying that the, the reason that the, that uh, Eric Garner is victimizing the store owners is because uh, the store owners can't avoid the taxes, and therefore for Eric Garner to evade the taxes is victimizing the store owners. Again, patently ridiculous because if uh, Eric Garner can go out and sell untaxed cigarettes, then this is prima facie evidence that you can sell cigarettes without paying taxes. Mm. There are risks involved. But then again, there's risks involved in paying taxes as well, that they're That's going true. to pay for warfare and get millions of people killed. There's also the risk that you'll screw up the tax forms, and then they'll come and after you. Go to you prison, and prison for making a wrong uh, decimal point. Yeah, I get that, but they, but they can't do anything about that, right? I mean, they can't do anything about cigarette taxes, but they can- well, they can stop snitching. Yeah, that's certainly something they can do. They can they can look at somebody like Eric Garner and and uh, you know appreciate. The courage that somebody like that has to get into the business without jumping through the hoops. But a lot of these business owners are – it's the slave-on-slave slave violence thing where they see somebody else out there in the world who's done something without jumping through the same hoops and they get jealous and they get angry because, well, damn it, I had to get a license. I had to pay the state. I had to jump through all these hoops. Well, so should everyone else, and I'm going to call in and snitch on them. I mean that is the sickness. Yeah, and, 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 and who to do you defend think, that? And who do you think is going and getting – it reminds me of the story uh, – I don't know if we talked about it on here, but there was the, the maker of Views e-cigarettes wanted to go to the FDA and get e-cigarettes regulated, right? Oh because they wanted a regulatory capture yep. over an industry, and it's the and it's and it's these people that, in large part, are causing these things to happen. These uh, captains of industry or whatever who are like, "Hey, yeah. Congress, why don't you take over this industry so that nobody can compete with me?" And this is not so much different. Now, granted, yeah, was, uh, you know, a bodega owner on the streets of uh, Staten Island is not R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, it's but the same idea. it's the same idea yeah. that people want their monopolies and the government enforces them, and that this is somehow okay. Uh, or that, or that Eric Garner right. somehow becomes a, a victimizer through that is sick. And to have supposed voluntarists or anarchists backing up someone snitching like that, somebody you know telling on a competitor who's unlicensed, is just embarrassing. Let's yeah. continue. But they can get the guy who's undercutting them and taking away their business. All right, pause on the that. Sidewalk. Get him. It's 
their business, right? That's what he's saying. It's their business. They he's own it because they paid licensing they're fees. They're stealing Chris. his business. So what happened, uh, uh, Mr. Molyneux, what happened to competition in a market environment, right? Mm -hmm. If I have a, a way to, uh, if I have a, let's say I had a better protection service than you in the absence of the state, right? And there was, uh, you know, some gang of criminals who came around robbing uh, my store and yours, but I had a, a protection agency that was able to fend off the offenders. Uh, and now, are, am I stealing your business because I can no, sell things lower? Or because I'm not customers. getting robbed? No, I protected my my interests. He doesn't own his customers. No business owns their customers. If some customer walks away from your business and goes to a competitor, it's because you failed at doing your job. You don't own them. You don't get to keep them just because you've got a license. More coming up here in moments. You can take control. It's Free Talk Live. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. His name is Osimo. Honda has unveiled its new human-like robot that the team says is designed to run a non-competitive half marathon and then smugly brag about it afterwards. Project leader Kenji Saito calls the robot very aggravating, adding, quote, We knew how to create a robot that could run great distances at high speeds. The challenge was to build a bot that would be impressed with its own minor achievement. The robot even believes it could run a full marathon if it wanted to, but it's just doing this to stay in shape and have some fun. If I wanted to, I probably could have played college football. Aiming to make the android as realistically human as possible, scientists installed sensors to register derisive comments and eye rolls from annoyed co-workers as genuine interest in its self-centered blather. The team noted that the irritating robot could be useful in medical fields as well. Already, Osmo has pestered scientists into sponsoring it to run a 5K in Cape Cod this summer. To date, it's raised over $700 for leukemia research. This is the Onion News Network. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. 
You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I don't know if anybody can defend what it is that Stefan Molyneux is saying here. I, I know a couple people who would defend it, like probably like uh, um, Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, uh, Bill de Blasio, right. the mayor of New York City. I guess when uh, I said anyone, I meant anyone within the liberty movement who oh, could Oh, yeah, probably it. nobody with any uh, worthwhile credentials. It's shocking. It's it's outrageous. I mean, it may even be I – mean, I'd say it ranks right up there with him using the government to take down a critical YouTube channel, which was his most recent uh, offense to the liberty community, if you will. Uh, but, you know, Stefan Molyneux is a well-known, in within the liberty circles at least, a well-known philosopher type who's made a lot of great videos in the past, but seems like within the last year or so has gone on a really crazy ego trip and has fallen away from, you know, really being a principled, liberty-minded person. And I mean, I, the only things that come to mind for me are, are this one and mm. the DMCA thing. How about where he said the if it weren't for him, the liberty movement would be set back 2,000 years? I think that that was a really huge ego trip. That's what I was saying, but ego trip. I don't think that he's straying from any principles by saying it. I, I didn't really, say that was straying from I, principles. I, think, I honestly believe he's one of the most important people in the history of, of libertarian thought. I really do. You think so? I really do. Because Isn't he's, he just repackaging he's, old he's, ideas? He's reaching millions of people. He is He's repackaging them in large part. I mean, we all are in, in large part, right? Yeah. But he is finding new and more entertaining ways of explaining them. Millions of people are being exposed to these ideas because of Stefan Molyneux, and he's giving them and and for the most part, he's giving them a an absolute raw, hardcore, uh, 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 shatter a paradigm shattering version of this. Instead of trying to sort of like go through the hey, well maybe you have a, a limited government and a blah 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 blah. Yeah. And he's really just saying no, you can't continue to use violence against your fellow man. And he's doing it, you know, yeah. so oh, frequently and in such. I want to give him credit where credit's due. I mean, like I said, he's got a catalog of some really great stuff in the past. But recently, it seems like he's gone off the rails. No, and but recently, too, he's made great stuff. And I think even the stuff that people are coming after him, calling him a misogynist for, is is great stuff. He's trying to look at uh, women's role in the cycle of violence, talking about, look, people, uh, you, you criticize uh, women as a group, and you're a misogynist, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's got some pretty convincing numbers here that's saying, like, look, women are the vast majority of uh, child abusers, that they're more likely to abuse boys than, than, uh, than girls, and then you wonder why men go out and do violence in society uh going after um uh, the, yeah but to make a statement like evil is a matriarchal thing is pretty ridiculous the matriarchal lineage of evil is the is the title of the video and he's just saying that it has it right and and i think that people has have this what? Uh, the, the evil has a matriarchal lineage it, it exists Right. What is that supposed to mean, though? It, it sounds it, ridiculous. Our, our mothers abuse us as children, and we grow up to think that violence is okay. And what not that our fathers, fathers don't. Believe me, <laughs> do you think that fathers abusing their children does not get enough attention? I mean, it does. I, in my book, yeah. it does. Like, but you to make think the about, claim that evil comes from the 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 you know comes from women is pretty ridiculous. Evil comes from men and women. Okay, but, but he didn't most say that. people don't want to accept that. And what he's really responding to, in large part, is the feminist movement. Okay, and if you put it in that context, if you read feminist content, that women blame men for the violence in the world, and that is sick. That is sexist. That's misandry. I agree and that's with you there. Awful. And but to, but to and do the same the thing in reverse is not any better. No, but and that's what I heard out, him say. But to, if if you're pointing out what women are doing in the society, if you're pointing out the statistics and saying like, oh well, actually, as it turns out, you have a disproportionate role in this problem, and nobody wants to look at it. If you if you look at it in context where yeah. he's responding to a particular issue, then you see like this is not just Stefan Molyneux hates women. Well, we this is go. Stefan Molyneux responding to a particular. Thing. I honestly haven't listened to very much of it, but I did hear him make that statement, and it was, you know, an unprovoked kind of thing. I mean, it was in a larger conversation, but it wasn't like he qualified it and said that, you know, some women are violent or most or whatever. You know, he didn't say anything. He just said that evil is of the, of the matriarchy. 
and that's it's not, suggested that's not what he comes said. From. That is. Uh, he made a video titled no, The he Matriarchal actually Lineage. Says it. No, he actually says it in one of these clips. But right. the, the critique about the True Shibes clips is that they could have been edited. And this clip that we're playing for you right now has not been edited. Uh, this is straight from his own YouTube channel, and it is an unedited three-minute long clip. We're more than halfway through. We're going to continue it here. Okay. This is actually him commenting on the idea that somehow he believes that selling things without government permission, without their permission slip, without their license, is a crime with a victim. We continue here. Business off the sidewalk that their taxes pay for. Again, I, I I'm just talking that. about this within the context of the situation, but just saying, oh, well, he was selling cigarettes, there was no victim. Well, there was. Because if there was no victim, why was anyone calling about that? Uh, because snitches are dirty and they call to try to take out their competition in this particular case. Same thing with the neighbor who snitches on a neighbor they don't like because something's in their lawn, like a gnome or something that they don't like. They're not victimized by the gnome in the lawn. They don't like their neighbor and they want to use the state against them. Exactly. And and we have, look, Stefan, uh, maybe go get yourself a police scanner. I mean, just, I don't know what's going on in whatever part of Canada you're in, but go listen to the police scanner for a while and you'll hear people calling 911 for Victimless offenses mm. all day long. You know, I, I, we live I in smell Keene, New pot Hampshire. Next door. Smelling marijuana. There was a guy. There's a, there's a woman who works with a demo that that was like told this story about how she called the police because a guy in a store smelled his clothes smelled like marijuana. So she alerted the police department because he smelled like it's pot. Ridiculous. We continue here with the audio. Calling about this. Because, I, if because... I go for a stro if I go for a stroll in the woods, there's no victim, right? <laughs> And so nobody's, oh, my God, call, call uh, cops, call Stop. guy in the woods. So, so <laughs> if you go stro through a stroll in the woods, there's no victim. Well, what if somebody thinks you're a prowler and, like, calls you because you're, like, a, a creepy uh, guy uh, hanging out in the woods where her children play or something what like that? What if somebody thinks you're you're stepping on nature and you're destroying the natural, pristine uh, woodsiness? Yeah, and I've I've had the police called on me for hanging out in the woods before. It, it, all throughout my teenage years, I was running from the police for hanging out in the woods. He really sounds like he's scraping desperately to to say something throughout this whole clip. It really um, is. Continue That's right. I mean, so somebody was bothered by what he was doing, and somebody felt, or I guess a number of people felt, that his presence was negatively impacting their lives in some manner. It, well, boo-hoo. Well, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, it doesn't yeah matter because this guy feel. has a cheaper product than me. Yeah. He's negatively affecting my bottom line, right. so therefore go strangle him out in full view of the it, public on yeah, camera. It doesn't matter if you feel bad because somebody's out there competing with you. Do a better job. Yeah, I, I think that uh, if I was out there uh, selling, uh, I don't know, any product and somebody else opened up a store next to me and paid their taxes and sold a cheaper product than me, you know, I wouldn't be too happy about that, but I wouldn't have any claim. Significant enough manner to call the uh, police. And so sure. whether he was bothering their customers and the customers weren't going in, whether he was selling cigarettes, whether he was intimidating people, I don't know because there's no footage from before the incident. But is now what well, I don't know about the the case and maybe you know uh, Chris, was he alleged to have been selling the cigarettes directly out front of a convenience store? Um, I don't know the establishment that he was selling them out in front of. It wouldn't mm -hmm. surprise me. I'm willing to just run with that assessment. I'm, okay. I'm happy to go with that and say, hey, you know, I understand why the guy who's running the convenience store gets upset about that. I, I get it. I just don't think he has a claim to use violence, you know, much less a deadly force, uh, much less to call the most uh, violent gang in the history of mankind to come and do his dirty work. Right, because there it's a private property issue, right? Where if, there, if the sidewalk out in front of the store were actually private property, then he could have that person removed from that private property. Or he could walk 40 feet in the other direction and save his own life. But this is right. not, you know, this is not what anybody asked him to do. They said, hey, you're going to jail because you have cigarettes that we didn't get a cut of. But uh, clearly there was enough of an incident and a repetitive enough of an incident that was harming people's perceived self-interest to the point where they're willing to call the cops, well, then there is. There are victims within the context of the situation. And, and they can't change the cigarette tax law, but they can get a guy who, because he's not obeying the law, is able to undercut them um, off the street. So if you don't obey the law, then it's totally legitimate from Stefan Molyneux's viewpoint to have the police called on you. If, if you if you are undercutting their business and they can get the force of law to kill you, 
Go ahead. Go for it. I mean, that's that's what's going on. And I and I hate this because I like the guy. And, and it's I, a, I like him, too. I find him a likable individual. I've met him a number of times. He's been on the show as a, as a co-host in the past. But there's a real danger to this particular viewpoint, and I'd like to focus on that when we come back. It's Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. <laughs> This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. I'm a mid-century architectural wonder, a house made entirely of glass. So you can imagine my fright when giant pieces of hail started falling from the sky. Did I mention I'm made entirely of glass? Everyone was running here, running there, trying to get out of the house, but what am I to do? I am the house. Your house can't protect itself. That's why the GEICO Insurance Agency helps make it easy to switch and save on homeowner's insurance. You could save even more when you combine your homeowners with an existing auto insurance policy. Call GEICO, go to GEICO.com, or visit your local office. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. Woo! That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain. If you are already on the line, we're going to do our best to get you in here. I wanted to make sure we got through that clip 
of uh, Stefan Molyneux basically throwing his listeners under the bus. I w- this is the disturbing part about this. Stefan Molyneux, well-known libertarian philosopher guy. He's made lots of great videos in the past. And there's been some recent stuff that he's done that's been really shocking. Uh, like, really out of character for somebody who supposedly understands the ideas of voluntarism and liberty. And so this most recent clip that we've just finished playing is him uh, explaining that he thinks that selling loose cigarettes is a crime with a victim because somebody has a license and therefore they're losing business. And so... Uh, uh, that's a victim crime, and so therefore it's okay to call the police on those people. I, I mean, I summed that yeah, up. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, it sounds to me as though he's saying that because somebody basically undercuts you by avoiding being victimized by the state, that uh, that's a really good reason to call the most violent gang around and uh, have him choked out this on the streets of New York City. Is so dangerous of an idea, and I don't know. Uh, let, let me just try to bring this home for a moment. He's basically saying that lots of the people who listen to him who are probably doing business in some way without state permission, like agorism is kind of a big thing in the liberty movement. Yep. The idea of agorism is to do business without asking government permission. That's at the core of the idea of agorism. Yep. And th- he's basically saying anyone engaging in agorism is someone worthy of calling the police on. You've got it coming if they choke you to death on the streets of Staten Island. He's saying if you are making food for somebody without a government permission slip, you should have the police called on you because somebody's not somebody with a license is missing out on business because Sorry of that. Sorry about that, Mandrick. What's that? You're taking a cab, an Agora cab, which is something that exists in Manchester. It's a service ro- operated by a Free State Project participant. He takes people places. They pay him. He doesn't have a cab license. Gun him down. Uh, apparently, you should be calling the cops on those and people. Pe- people I mean, call crazy. me violent. Somebody running a pirate radio station. Uh, How putting, dare you? You know, as n- running a gov- you know, running a, an unapproved radio station, putting the ideas of liberty out there across the airwaves. Call the FCC. Hang they, them high. That's what happened here in Keene. We've had four iterations of a pirate radio station here in town. In the most recent time, the operator was visited by both code enforcement and the FCC, and the code enforcement guy let it slip that guess who called? It was the existing licensed business in town that has radio licenses from the FCC. They're the ones who called. And it sounds like Stefan's totally fine with that. It, it does. And uh, I, we're going to end up running out of yeah. time here, but I'll tell you what, I am finally bringing back some garbage podcast. Oh, excellent. So on uh, January 2nd, the day after tomorrow, yep. uh, I'll be doing it from 5 to 7. Check out uh, ChristopherCantwell.com. Uh, has the link Good. to the YouTube video for the live feed. And if you're like listening to LRN.FM, you're not missing anything much. It's the, <laughs> it's the, it's the Freedom Fiends encore, and they stuck. Well, you know, if you keep it up, uh, Chris Cantwell, we might actually put you on LRN.FM. Maybe I'll do that. But I just got to produce t- regular content. Yeah, yeah see, I know. I want it like weekly, typically. If you go two weeks once in a while without doing it, it's no big deal. You take a week off. But generally, weekly content is kind of the minimum requirement to get on the network. Um, but but go check it out. ChristopherCantwell.com. I've been on the show. It was fun. Yeah, it's All a right. blast. Let's go to your calls. Paul's on the line in Arizona. On uh, Paul, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Ian. Yeah, um, I was calling in earlier uh, because uh, you were talking about stuff on earlier in the week, and I was kind of wanting to uh, clear up a few things. Uh, I can't say I, I agree with what his current, uh, what you've been playing there. That's kind of like a, a shock to me. It's a shocker, yeah. Uh, but I do appreciate, Chris, your standing up for a lot of his other controversial points of view, which I think need to be said. So thank you, Chris, for... Uh, well, you're going to for... have to pick one thing if you want to you know, put something out there tonight because we've got some folks yeah, waiting. Yeah, well, I just wanted to refute some of the things that were talked about earlier. Pick one. Week. Pick one. Uh, well, the Defu thing. I think that's where he gets the a lot thing? of crap. The one thing? Defu. Defu. Yeah. Defu. Remove yourself from one's family of origin. This is yeah. Uh, yeah, jargon and term that uh, that's what that means. Go ahead. And Ian, I heard you say making some statements that seem to be opinion stated as fact. And I just wanted to I invite you to maybe reexamine what you say because his position, I've never heard him tell somebody to disconnect from their family. I I've have, and I'm a regular say, listener. Yeah, Chris has heard I, it. No, and what do you say, Paul, to the people who say they've been on the inside of the uh, inner circle that Stefan Molyneux doesn't recommend it as often publicly, but with his inner circle followers, it's the first thing that he recommends? Do you think they're lying? Uh, well, I've known the guy for almost eight years, and I've not – I mean, his position is always – Talk to the family first. Make sure that there isn't any way of okay. 
So oh, he's, he's not, he's not incorrect. I mean, he, he's, 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 he's the guy, the, the caller is correct. That he will say, hey, look, if you've got some way of reconciling this, yeah. then go ahead and do it. The, tr- the truth of the matter is. He's saying that publicly, I think though. even, I think what even about privately, the allegations? if you pride. But what about the allegations of the people who claim they were in the inner circle, which is also a cult thing, uh, but they, you know, they claim they were in the inner circle and that it's constantly his recommendation there. Were you in that inner circle, Paul, and you didn't see that happen? Well, the recommendation is, if you're constantly taking abuse, you know, if you're with somebody who's constantly being critical of you, mm-hmm. undermining you, you know, uh, it just it doesn't have sure. to do Sure. No, I understand. Which I imagine a lot of the that. a lot of the people in the inner circle probably meet that description, right? They've probably got damaged relationships, and this is why they're attaching to Stefan Molyneux, okay, and that's so, why they're getting So the, the thing advice. is, we can't know what the truth is, because we're not on the inner circle, and, and, you know, taking these other people's word for it, we would just have to take their word for it. So we'll take your word for it tonight, Paul. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Um, I don't know if the inner circle people have proof of their claims. I don't know that. Uh, so it's just what they've claimed. So that's why I think, you know, actually playing his own words here is, is certainly more relevant. Let's go to Steve. He's on calling from Misery. Steve, you're on Free Talk Live. Doesn't sound like you're in good shape for New Year's Eve. Well, it's always a state of misery. Sorry to hear that. But <laughs> this guy, this guy, Stefan Molyneux, I've never liked him. I don't like his presentation. I don't like the way he comes across. He does sound like a cult leader. I'm a psychologist, and I definitely think that yeah, that's what he's trying to do. Is get let me let me followers. ask you though do you do you disagree with his politics, or do you just not uh, do you, you just say you don't like his presentation? Do you think he's not presenting his ideas well? Well, well I agree with some of the things he says, not all of them. And given this new information, now I really don't like him. So you would agree that so, that selling cigarettes without paying taxes is a victimless crime and doesn't deserve to have punishment from a, government then? That's a complete victimless crime. No government should be involved in that. Thanks, it's man. It's just something somebody's doing. Big deal. Yeah, I heard you but there. Look, I actually like it. Stefan. I find him a likable person. I haven't seen him in a couple of years. It's been a while since he's been to New Hampshire. Uh, but you know, I've always enjoyed having him on the show. I, I, he's had a good sense of humor when he's been on here. He's, he's funny. Um, and I think he's generally good at communicating ideas. It's just that now he's got the wrong ideas for some reason. And oh well, them, yeah. people change, I guess. Steve, any other thoughts you want to share yeah. tonight? Yeah, actually, yeah, I didn't even call about that. I was calling about the free will versus determinism Go quick. issue. So I was going to ask, uh, Cantwell, yeah. when you drive home from the studio tonight, you have a certain route that you're going to take, right? Yeah. Like the most effective route? Yes. Okay, so could you break from that route? I could. You could? Yeah. But are you going to? Well, I'm probably not. No, I'm probably not going to. I mean, I don't want to go grab like a coffee or something. If I did, then I would. Yeah. If I and wanted to thing. do something else, gonna... I would go do something what else. Are you, what are you driving at, Steve? Well, we don't we don't have time for it, but I know what he's getting to. You know, you know what I'm saying. Like, you could like go in, into another neighborhood. You could take like you know, a you take the scenic three route. or four or five mile route. Yeah. 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 You could. I mean, but I could go out to the interstate point. and stop off at truck stops Sometimes, and try to get BJs from strangers. I mean, you know, well, I could do point? a lot of things, what's, but that's not what I feel like doing tonight. You know? It's acknowledged, you know, we can acknowledge that another option is there, but what's, what are you driving at? What's the point? Well, I mean, you're kind of determined to go the way you're going to go. No, so really. He's you making that, making that choice every night. You don't have free will. I wish we could get deeper yeah. into this, but we really, really don't have time. Call another night, Steve. Appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to Liberty Phoenix. He's on via Skype. Hello, Liberty Phoenix. Evening, gents. I'll be I'll be brief. Yes, um, as far as Molyneux is concerned, I'd have to really debate him and get deep into what he's talking about to actually find out whether or not you know he's correct in his assumption. Because there's got to be some governing factor that's allowing him to make that determination the there, determination that it's okay to snitch on people if they yeah. if you don't have a license go or if you go, license. go watch the video in its entirety it's titled uh racist r- racist until proven innocent and i would encourage you to watch the yeah, whole yeah we thing. didn't edit anything out of that that was a yeah. three minute clip but you can watch it it's 20 minutes long and he continues at, at great detail this is an hour and 50 minutes long this is a full full show of oh, okay Chris i gotcha reason of my call really was, Chris, um, I wanted to call you out on something that I thought was a contradiction. Okay. Uh, I want to know what you determined to be a valid uh, 
governing body that would certify people? Because you keep citing, you know, people that are of low distinction as far as what they've accomplished. And I don't think that someone necessarily needs a third party to validate someone's opinion. It's, for- it's okay. So just to really quick answer your question, because mm-hmm. we're go- we're yeah. gonna the show's over. But uh, I don't recognize these people as important, and it's my judgment. That's that's the answer to your question. Uh, happy to talk to you about it another time. Yeah, would love to hear more exactly what he meant with the question, because I found it a little confusing. A third party solutions. We got UL Underwriters Laboratories. I don't even know if that was what he was talking about. There are are alternatives to government certification. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the Realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The latest episode of Cop Block Radio is next after the news on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, December 31st, 2014. Silver is trading at $16 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,196 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $315. Antiwar.com reports a UN Security Council resolution on Palestinian statehood by 2017 has failed with eight votes in favor, one short of the nine needed for passage. Even then, the vote wasn't going through as the U.S. vetoed it. The U.S. has promised the veto and reportedly threatened to sanction the Palestinians for even presenting the doomed bill, which called for Israel to end the occupation by 2017. Israeli Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman termed the resolution an act of aggression, and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu lobbied heavily for the U.S. to veto against it. Still unclear is the fate of an alternative version proposed by the French government, which is significantly watered down and only calls for the resumption of peace talks in the next two years. Israel is pushing for a veto of that, but the U.S. hasn't yet made its intentions clear. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial 